I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chair. I understand there's uh, adjustment to the minutes you'd like to move. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have a couple of amendments to the uh, agenda. I'd like to move that immediately following the Pledge of Allegiance, we add the following two items. One is to adopt the minutes of the May 3rd and the August 1st delegation meeting. The next item is to ratify the actions and votes of the August 1st delegation meeting. And then following uh, the bullet point of supplemental appropriation, Add other business and underneath that other business, two bullet points, one being discussion and action on uh, vacancies and leadership. The second one being um, other business that may become before the board. And then following that bullet item, add public comment and limit the speakers to two minutes. I so move that. So this is a motion by Representative Lang, second by Representative Puff. Uh, uh, probably the appropriate place to have that discussion is under there uh, on the motion, but Representative How uh, Ray Howard is, is the chair of the uh, uh, executive committee, is also vice chair of this delegation. So we need to have a discussion around those that vacancy and the vacancies in general and see what we want to do about it. Well, what are vacancies in general? Uh, again, so there's two empty positions. So, and again, I want to have a discussion about the vacancies and leadership. So that's, that's the motion. And that's, we'll have the further discussion when the item comes up. Uh, now's not the time for the- Thank you for that enlightenment and elucidation. I'm prepared to vote. Okay. Uh, oh, I should uh, announce that uh, Representative Barney was, uh, late with a, a fire call and I have not heard from Representative Aldrich or Representative Harvey Bullion. Harvey Bullion, Representative Bullion will be here. She was, when I talked to her about five minutes ago, she was at the Winners Palm Bridge on her way here. Okay, very good. Um, okay, um, so motion and second and uh, any further discussion on the motion? Possibly. Representative B. No, I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Uh, um, in favor. Okay. So, um, Representative Lang, do you have that uh, written out that I could uh, um, give it? Yeah. I read my chicken scratch over. Um, all right. So uh, the uh, first order of business then is to adopt minutes of the May 3rd and August 1st uh, meeting. We'll have to do those separately because a lot of us were not there for an August 1st meeting. So uh, all those uh, have a motion to accept the minutes of the uh, May 3rd meeting. So moved. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of the August 1st minutes. Second by uh, Matthew. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Nay. Uh, so there were a number of us, I believe that if, if you are, were not present at that uh, meeting, then you would uh, abstain. Um, I think that uh, since we're gonna go this way, we're gonna have to question the uh, legality of that meeting. Uh, frankly, uh, it was not properly called. 
it was not actually a meeting. And uh, as such, uh, frankly, I believe that this delegation needs to be led by someone other than myself. So I am stepping down as chair. So you can add to your agenda uh, chairmanship of this delegation. So given it's my motion, I guess I'm going to just, this is a quandary because we have an, a motion on the table and now we have to uh, have someone lead the meeting. So I'm going to nominate Harry Bean to run the meeting. Second. Make Harry the chair. Yes. Are, are you nominating uh, Representative Bean for chair pro tem or to fill the vacancy that has now been created as, as a chair? Permanent chair. Permanent Thank chair. You Thank you. Thank you. Harry, it's all yours. Well, I guess I'll. Uh, well, we have nobody running meetings, so I'll just give my motions. So I'll take it. So. Um, is there any further discussion on the nomination of Harry Bean as chair? It has to be done by roll call. Understood. We can have other nominations. Are there any other nominations for chair? Yes. I nominate the representative Tom Clark. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved by Representative Silber. I, 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 I procedurally I object that the maker of a motion cannot cannot uh, take over the chair, even temporarily, it falls to the next officer in line. It should either be the vice chair or the, or the secretary. Sure. Barbara wants to run it. She's had that. I was just trying to move the meeting I along. Know, I know. Once a stickler, always a stickler. So there has been a nomination on the floor for Harry Bean, uh, and that was uh, Rep Representative Lang moved that, and the second is by Representative Boards. Representative Silver has made a motion to nominate me for chair. Are there any seconds on that? I'll second that. Are there any other nominations?
chair, as you are the now the new chairmanship of the new chair. Um, and due to recent activities, I will no longer be able to serve as clerk of the delegation. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I nominate Representative Harley Bully to take the place of secretary. So we have someone to take minutes. Clark. Clark, I'm sorry. I'll second that. Are there any other nominations? Good trip. So, uh, any other nominations? So, Mr. Chair, if I understand, we have two nominations on the table. We have Representative Bully and Representative Terry. Is that correct? Do we get a second for Terry? Was there a second for Terry? Representative Terry? Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Chair, I decline. Decline what? I decline the nomination. I don't have to be nominated. I decline the nomination. Representative Terry rep, uh, declined the nomination. So that means, is, uh, is there any other nominations? Not seeing any. I, uh, I assume that that would make it unanimous. Let make it a vote. All those in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 This caught me off guard here a little bit. Sorry, I, I mean, this whole all of a sudden thing. What I need to do is uh, I need to get a copy of the new agenda. Uh, it should be, Mike, do you have, did you leave it there? So right now we have, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair, current motion that's on the floor is the adoption of the August 1st minutes, and it's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> And that's where we're standing on discussion and then uh, approval of those minutes. <coughs> so this uh, is this. You clean that, please. Sorry. So the current motion that's on the floor now that we've taken care of the adjustments in leadership um, are the uh, the motion that was made was the adoption of the August first minutes uh, of the delegation, um, and that's been moved and seconded. We're open for discussion okay. and then a vote. Okay. Thank you. So um, discussion. Uh, meeting the alleged meeting of August first was not a legal meeting of delegation. It was not an emergency. It was not called by the chair. The minutes that you are looking at does not describe the emergency, <clears throat> and simply, it was an illegal meeting. Is there any other discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to make note that there are two uh, pending uh, hearings before a judge to determine the legality of this meeting. August first. Are there any other discussion? Representative Lyon. Again, this is the outline of the minutes of discussions that occurred, whether it was illegal or not. We can take that up in the next vote, uh, which we're going to have a discussion about. Like we can have a discussion about ratification and 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 that aspect of it. So right now we're strictly adopting what action, what what was discussed during that meeting, and I think it's appropriate to vote on. Uh, I was not present at the meeting. Was it just matters discussed and there were no actions taken? Nope. There were, well, again, this, this the meeting minutes uh, show all the uh, activity that was done. So votes and actions and, and discussions are, are documented in the minutes. And again, Representative Terry, if, according to the chair, if you weren't present, you're probably going to abstain from the vote anyway. So that is true, but I certainly am entitled to the information. Yes. And I appreciate your uh, further explaining that activity is uh, in food and discussions in the food policy. Thank you. Would anybody be interested in uh, taking a couple of minutes to read the minutes of the August 1st meeting or would we just take one from here? Or? Mr. Chair, can I make one minor change to the minutes? On the last item, uh, on the last page, item three, um, where Representative Huff made the uh, move to accept Dr. Strang's resignation, there's a vote there. Um, and because that vote was 
it was roll called, although it's not re referenced in here because all the other votes are unanimous. So everybody was present, voted yes. So roll call is pretty easy. But that last vote is a nine to one vote. Um, and it, we should make note in the minutes for the roll call purposes that Representative Cloger was the one no vote. So that would be the only amendment to the minutes as written. Put down the form of motion, please. Sure. I move we just uh, on page three under the motion to adopt and the roll call vote that came up nine to one. We just make a uh, amendment that says that Representative Cloger was the one no vote so that everybody can know who, who voted how. Second. Representative Puff seconds it. Any discussion? Representative Cloger. <laughs> I voted no with regrets to the FDA uh, noted. Sure, Juliet's the new secretary. Yes. We're going to sort of clerk chief. Yes. Were there, were there any representatives over there? Mr. Chairman, um, was there a resignation tendered uh, to accept? The letter. There was a resignation tendered. It was verbal. It was a, an affirmative. It's on resignation, not conditional on any particular actions. No, it was, it was tended on a particular action that was running. And it was a demand was made that that resignation be <coughs> uh, ended. All right. The, the Mr. Chair, employees, point of order. So the discussion is around whether or not the minutes are accurate. And, and whether or not the minutes reflect what was spoken and done in the meeting, not the legality of, of the action. So the question is, are the words on the paper correct? Not the, the details. So the resignation that was verbal was approved by all of the members of the Absolutely. I believe Representative Comtois was first, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there was also a couple of other verbal resignations at that time. I'm just wondering um, why some verbal resignations uh, triumphed over others. Did, when, did anybody hear, hear any of these other verbal resignations? I heard none of them. Building a, only I would say, Mr. Chair, the resignation, a motion wasn't brought forward to accept those resignations. So therefore, no action was taken. Thank you, Representative Thank you. Lang. Mr. Representative Dean, uh, with respect to the resignation that you have described as verbal, was the verbal resignation made at this particular meeting or at another time? If at another time, when and where and who heard it and who reported it? Okay, there were 300 more or less people that heard it. Um, by, the, by, the, by the principal party who resigned? Yes, sir. 300 you, people heard the resignation. You want me to give you the answer? Thank you. Okay. There was approximately 300 people at the Gunstock Hall up there. Um, Commissioner Strang was on Zoom, <clears throat> recorded on Zoom because he wasn't at the meeting. And he made his resignation at that point. And I'm sure not, not only a bunch of these people here, but probably most of them out there also heard that. And so it's on tape. And the date was? The day before August 1st. July 31st. I got out of the hospital like two days. Yeah. Ago. I was a little weak. July 31st? I believe so. Verbal resignation was tendered on July 31st. May the minutes please show that the answer to the question is that a verbal resignation was tendered on July 31st at a meeting on August 1st. Is that correct? That wasn't, Mr. Chair, if I may, that wasn't again. The motion was made to accept the resignation, and we can't add things to a meeting that we didn't say at the time. The motion was, the motion, it was moved, uh, Representative Huff moved to accept the, Dr. Strang's resignation from the Gunstock Air Commission. It was second, there was uh, an explain, it, it says, discussion Huff explained that during the GAC meeting of July 31st, Commissioner Strang said he would resign under conditions. So the minutes already reflect that information. Is there any other pertinent discussion? Representative Cloger. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, to the chair, I asked if Dr. Strain made that a verbal one that day uh, on the first. <clears throat> I heard the audio that the 300 people heard was made previously. <clears throat> that was not made on that day. We discussed that 
We were in talk. I had a problem. He did not resign. What he said at another meeting is not pertinent to this. I just want to bring the delegation up. The, so the reason I voted no with regrets was that was not made on this date. There was no written on that date. I had no resignation other than what he said at another meeting, which was not confirmed or codified by Dr. Strang when he was on um, that Zoom call. Any other discussion? I'd like to add in that uh, I got legal opinion on this. I know everybody that thinks they're a lawyer or is a lawyer thinks they have a legal opinion. Uh, I got mine from the Belknap County attorney. His legal opinion is that everything that happened that day was legal. That's not that's not what the, the motion is. The motion is to accept the minutes as they're written. And with, with, with the one correction. The one correction. So is any more discussion on the motion as opposed to the side, side show here? Let's, uh, I, I, I didn't mean that to be sarcastic. Just, uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm on that, I guess. Um, yes, I know what some of the stuff you said is too, sir. Mr. Chair, excuse me, sir, we're talking to him. So. Just so I can, be sure it is full. What we're accepting on um, the last delegation meeting on this first. <laughs> These are accepting that this is what happened. Legal or not, this is what happened at that point. Is that yes. what the right here? I just wanted to confirm. Does anybody think we need? Does anybody think we need a roll call vote on this? Uh, there are several people that were not there that cannot vote. I also don't have copies of the minutes either, so I don't know why. They were passed out. Do passed out. Would somebody like to make a motion that these people have a couple of minutes to read this? Just, just wait. Program. Just give them, give them two minutes. We don't have to I'm chair. I move the question. Has everybody read the minutes? Everybody's well, I'm moving the question. It's either a yes or a no vote. Yes. 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 Somebody move it. That's a valid vote. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous by the people that were at the meeting. So, uh, I can repeat the question, but I'll repeat the motion so everyone knows what they're voting on. So we're voting on the adoption of the August 1st minutes as amended on the last page to just recognize that Representative Cloger was the one sold no vote and with regret he made that vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is Jen, all. Mr. Chair, I think I can help here of the vote that you just took was a, a vote on moving the question. Right. And, so, right. Um, so now we're going to move so, so the motion. That 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 vote was yes. Now you're now you're voting. Now you're back to the main motion on the motion. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. So I'd like to uh I all, uh, <laughs> do a roll call vote. Uh, I don't want a roll call vote, but you just all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Abstain. And abstentions. Thank you.
So uh, the, the agenda. So next item on the agenda, Mr. Chair, by May, is the um, ratification adoption of, of the actions in, uh, taken during the August 1st meeting. And I move that we ratify the actions and votes taken during the August 1st meeting. And if I get a second, I'll be happy to speak for that motion. Shall second amendment? Sorry? Shall the amendment? Nope, we're not talking about the minutes anymore. We're talking about the actions and votes taken during that uh, meeting uh, to be ratified. We have a motion. We have a second button. If I can speak to that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So um, there has been some discussion around whether or not it was a legal meeting or it wasn't a legal meeting. Um, it's been it's clear that um, you know the goal of this delegation, in addition to, is to do what's in the best interest of our county. Um, and one of the items we know that uh, under Hull v. Grafton County, as outlined by the county attorney in a letter we all got. Um, that a corrective action on the off chance that there is a question of a meeting is a simple ratification at a, at a, at a later meeting of all actions and votes um, will clarify the issue that's a legal action and vote. And so by taking this motion, even if the uh, meeting was determined to be legal, we would still be correct in making the ratification of these votes and, and certifying that, which would again go to restricting the liability of the county so we don't have future lawsuits against us, which probably should be a good thing considering how many legal bills we've already built up to this state. So if we can avoid a lawsuit, we should take that action and avoid a lawsuit. And by taking this ratification vote, we will do that. Thank you. I'd like to say at this time that I don't think that we can discuss this here to the point that we're going to come up with a legal ending. I think it's going to be fruitless. I think the courts are going to have to make that decision. So are there any other discussions? Representative Sylvia. Absolutely. Um, the action taken, there was no, uh, we have yet to hear what the emergency was that would authorize an emergency meeting. If that could be enlightened, uh, that would be certainly helpful. Best I could tell uh, is that Dunstock was being held hostage and extortion was being demanded in the form of the return of Tom Day, who had violated his contract and walked off the job. Furthermore, we have a problem with uh, Representative Lang accepting campaign donation from Tom Day, if I believe that uh, the filings are correct, which also uh, Representative Lang, being former law enforcement, should understand bribery. This is Gunstock, a public asset, being held hostage so that Tom Day and mm -hmm. others can control the mountain. Representative Lang received a donation from Tom Day. In fact, Governor Sununu accepted donations. Reportedly, I don't know about the thousand dollars this year, whether or not that was signed by Tom Day. It was certainly not authorized by the Unstock Area Commission. Governor Sununu accepted a thousand dollars from the Unstock Area Commission possibly from Tom Day. And Tom Day was offered a position after walking off the job at Gunstock. Anyone that considers this a laughing matter, other than the Marxists in the crowd, this is a serious matter. Frankly, let's talk about legal action. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, federal racketeering charges come out of this. This is really ridiculous. Oh, go ahead and laugh. Okay. Fortunately, this will all get settled in another week and a half. And we'll see whether or not big money can convince. The residents of Belknap County to abandon principles. Mr. Chairman. 
So Chair, if I may, just, uh, just because my name was brought up a couple of times. Why? So, wow, it is true. I took a hundred dollar check from Tom Day. He, camp he donated my campaign in May, I believe it was, before, after, after uh, I had announced. Um, so before any of this occurred. Uh, however, the, the issue before us and the, and the emergency that was present and everybody I believe was involved in this conversation through various email chains and everything else was the fact that we knew that we had Solfest coming up. The fact that the state was telling us we weren't gonna be able to open the tram lift, which is part of the contract at Solfest, which was then gonna sue us because we didn't meet the contract obligations, which would put the county at further risk. And, last, and lastly, Mr. Chair, we had an issue of insurance. Uh, it, was, it was made aware to, to many members of the delegation that should uh, we not have senior staff on site, um, that the insurance company would not indemnify us for Solfest, which means the county would have been obligated for any actions that would have occurred. So if that's not the definition of an emergency, I don't know what the hell is. Um, it was clear we had to take action in order to protect the county so that we didn't have a lawsuit, we didn't have a potential insurance problem, and we had a solution. And this was the corrective action to make sure that all those things didn't occur. So that was the emergency that occurred. It was pretty damn clear to everybody, and you know, with, with, with a half a break. So I would just, again, I call a question that we move this vote uh, for ratification. So we'll sit here and argue all day long about legality later. Second. Second. Uh, I motion to move the motion. Second. Further discussion. Yes. Thank you. There's a motion to move the question. The motion to move the question. Discussion ends and we go right to a vote if the move the move the if the moving the question motion passes. So in other words, you're basically limiting anybody else having an opinion, but you're wrong. No, no, no. No, no, no. Thank you. You're out of order. I'm out of order because I'm leaving. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I find it extremely distressing that when a member is upset and leave the meeting, that other delegation members break into applause and smile. I think that's inappropriate. And I would ask, I would suggest that the chair guide the members of the delegation in appropriate responses to statements and actions of the members of the delegation. This is really the unique people who have been elected to public office. And I have information. There's a motion on the floor to call a question. And it's been properly seconded, so it's without call debate. Question. Roll call. Would you repeat the motion? Please? But right now, the question is just to call a question, call stop debate, so we can vote on the item and move on. No worries, Yes. No. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Forbes. Yes. No. Clerk votes yes. Representative Lang. Yes. Representative Yes. 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 So now the motion is on the floor. The motion on the floor for vote on a roll call vote will be the uh, ratification of all actions and votes taken during the August 1st meeting. Clerk, take the roll. Yes. Representative Yes. Representative Kamala. Which one am I voting on? Yes. Representative Yes. 
Sees fit to apologize, please do so now for, for their outburst. Okay. Oh. Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I, I think the next item we're moving on to now is the consideration of the cost items. And I'm, I'm, I guess my question is arena of the presentation by the commissioners, my understanding of the corrections, nursing home, support staff, and sheriff's office expenditures <clears throat> under this item are within budget constraints. Uh, not requiring a supplemental appropriation, but I think I'd just like to hear from them to see if that is in fact true or what's going on. So, yes, I can explain the uh, four collective bargaining units within the county have all been working and negotiating to be able to implement the new wage scale that was um, a result of the compensation study conducted for the end of last year and during the beginning of this year. So after uh, negotiations and several months, uh, we have all uh, four commissioners have reached agreement with each of the bargaining units. So what you have before you is uh, the corrections unit and the nursing home, which are both currently in agreement. So these will be memorandums of agreement made to allow for implementing this new wage scale uh, September 4th. <clears throat> the support staff bargaining unit is a full three year contract that has been negotiated, and those cost items are, are laid out in the, the page labor <clears throat> support staff. And the sheriff's bargaining unit is just to be uh, allowing for it to be a memorandum of agreement just to allow for the implementation of the wage study immediately and then we will continue working with them on a new contract. I think I've given you all the costs um, and broken them out by what they are and if you have any questions we'll do our best to keep it. No before you get a motion you still got to uh, public comment, but um, I, I do have a, just to make sure I'm, I'm clear and clarifying that. So in the case of the, we'll go through each section, the case of the corrections is $25,000 in, uh, increase in salaries and benefits. Um, and of that, again, that doesn't actually affect the 22 budget that we've already passed, that that <laughs> money for the corrections can be, uh, is, is within budget constraints yes. of 22. On the nursing home, the same question, the 22 is within the current budget uh, and we and the 23 would be um, a number that the next delegation 
they'll have to take up to deal with the budget in that item. But we're giving tentative improvement to the uh, wage scale increases of what it would look like in 23. You'd be giving absolute approval yep. of cost yep. Yes. Well, we can't hold we can't hold a future delegation to a number, but we're we're approving the the change. Yes. And, and it'll be a, it'll be reflective in the next budget. That's correct. Okay. And then this and that's a uh, and then the next one is the support staff. And this is a brand, this is a renegotiation of a full contract and it's a three year term. <clears throat> we have uh, a, a correction of the uh, 22, the minor change, which again is all within budget. And then the other items are like any other um, contract there are increases that will be dealt with by a future delegation. Yeah. And the same with and the sheriff is all within budget of that $10,019. That there's no supplemental appropriation needed. There's no taxes being raised to meet these requirements. Correct. Thank you. I got a question. Thank you. Quick question on this on the merit pad. I see under the Department of Corrections, you got the call of five percent and three point six for a merit and a five percent. Is that in different years? It's showing you that it. Without the new, <clears throat> without this agreement, they will get a five percent merit increase. Okay. With the agreement, they'll get three point six percent. Okay. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, is that the merit? Is that an automatic, or is it up to the department heads on performance? It's up to the the merit portion. Is up to department heads uh, with an acceptable rating of. Let's see, a rating of acceptable on a performance evaluation earns them a merit increase. Anything okay. less than average score, they do not get it. So if they're, they're average, they, they're, for an example, they're going to get 5%. But if you have somebody that's extraordinary, they're going to get the same 5%? That's right. Yeah, it's the same step system we've always had here, and that is how, that's how it works. <clears throat> The cost of living, I don't want to just not say it, but the new disagreement includes the cost of living going forward, uh, which will be it was capped at 5%. The cost of living is 7.3% uh, right now. So 5% is what it will be next year. Do you have a follow up? No. No further discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So under this new thing, are they still getting the um, sick bonuses also under these new contracts? The sick pay? If they are currently, I think someone, because that's another per certain percentage that they get on top of this. So right now, it's my understanding that 8.6% <coughs> increase annually under these cost contracts. Correct. I don't know where you're looking for. 5%. Oh, yes, all of that. Three point six percent merit, yeah. plus their sick bonus, and plus um, on top of this, whatever the percentage that we are uh, putting into the retirement is also going to go up. Is that correct? I mean, so those wait, those are not included in these numbers. As as well, it is okay. You have retirement here. Yeah, retirement's included, and no matter what you do here, retirement is going to be paid because, as you know, that's required. We have nothing to say about that. Right, and the sick bonus, I believe, has been removed from all. I think it's been removed from support staff too at this point. So there, I, I just need to take a minute and go find that out. Paul, thank you. Um, so it is my understanding, and maybe my recollection doesn't serve me, but in prior agreements with the union we had discussed and it was done so that we got rid of colas because we're going to do everything based on merit um now you're bringing back colas into the new union contracts is that correct that's correct oh. oh thank you so and i understand that um the retirement system is something that we have to pay into but it is every time we increase wages, like in the sheriff's department, and it's an additional 30% on top of what we're paying uh, for, for wages um, that we have to, uh, that comes out of taxpayers. It's approximately 28 point something. Um, so it's a huge cost to taxpayers. And um, so I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
I just remind that we have an inflationary rate of 9.1%. We're giving a 8.6%. Sounds like in, in, in raises, which that puts the employees still behind the curve and trying to pay their basic bills just like everybody else. Um, I just want clarification. Are we discussing the supplemental appropriation now, or are we going to be discussing that after we do some public, public comment? I'm just trying to kind of where we're at with this. Are we just asking the funny administrative right questions? I guess uh, we're going to open this for public comment. Well, so if I if I may, Mr. Chair, I think if I heard uh, 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 Ms. Shackett correctly, right now there's no supplemental appropriation needed for these funds, that they're all within budget. The supplemental appropriation will come when we're talking about all those projects that are listed, Project 24, 13, 20, 25, et cetera, that that's the supplemental appropriation. All of these funds are within budget. Um, is there going to be another discussion to discuss, I guess, these contracts, or is this the discussion we're having now? So this, is, this, this is the discussion. Okay, so may I? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to, um, interesting thing just came out yesterday in the news that we are going into a decline. Uh, Ford is laying off workers. Amazon is getting ready to lay off workers. Manufacturing plants are facing uh, either <coughs> closing or laying off workers due to the high utility costs in this state. People are taking jobs for making less money per hour because their hours are being slashed in other places with higher pay. I just want everyone to understand that there is an effect going on here, and we are not going to know the effects of this for another three to four months on how bad this economy is going to get for some people. And we have to be cognizant of the taxpayer. And I understand, Mr. Representative Wang, that right now it may not increase this budget, or we might not need more money for taxes this year. But going forward, if we put this in place, it'll definitely increase the tax base for next year and the next two years. And it is going to hurt a lot of people on fixed incomes, the elderly and people making low wages. And with layoffs coming, they are scared right now. I can tell you that. We have to be cognizant of all the taxpayers in this county. The last response to that, Mr. Chair, again. So, um, Serving on ways and means as I do, I get to look at all of our tax revenue in the state and what's going on. Our business taxes are still going up. We, we reduced the percentage, and yet we're taking in more money than we ever anticipated, uh, even with the reduced percentages. So New Hampshire was greater than the first quarter of this year. It's the fastest growing economy in the entire Northeast. Um, and while I recognize the concerns of future future actions of this delegation, understand that that's gonna be the responsibility of future actions of the delegation. If they feel that due to the economy, they need to lay off or, or reduce the number of workers in corrections in nursing home or in the sheriff's department or somewhere else, that will be an action of a future legislation to decide based on what's going on. Given the vote we're voting on today, we're voting on the fact that in 22, our employees uh, need a pay raise. We're all hitting a 9.1%. We're doing it within budget. So there's no effect on taxation. And I think it's an appropriate action to show uh, to for our employees. Thank you. And Mr. We have a hard time being fully staffed. So to say that we should have layoffs in the future, I think is something that we shouldn't be talking about. Um, the other thing is, is what we have to keep in mind is that all the employees that were salaried got $2,500 bonuses. If, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in 2021 and in 2022. And the nursing home staff, if I'm correct, received a four to five dollar an hour increase along with a stipend of two hundred dollars per week on top of that now my question to you is are those numbers also included that that raise that the nursing home received is that included in the numbers already and are we asking for something more wages on top of that those numbers were already approved all the wages that are currently being paid up were already approved by this body. And so this is a request to increase the wages. And that's why it's before you because cost items of union contracts require the legislative body's approval. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so basically, because we approved, already approved a pretty substantial increase in nursing home wages, the wages that we're now going to be asked to approve are on top of those um, that were approved. And I believe if we 
I'm not sure what the percentage was, but for some of them, it was over a 10% increase already. So now we're going to be doing almost another 10% increase in their wages, along with their $200 a week stipend bonus, which is not included in this contract. The only thing I would correct is it's $150 a week that okay. you have approved under the ARPA premium pay project. All right, and last year it was $200. That's right. <clears throat> Thank you. You know, there's been a lot of con controversy about the, the uh, empty beds at the nursing home. And I spoke with uh, Shelly Richardson and she said she couldn't find help. And uh, if you don't have the help, you can't fill the beds because they need care. Um, we uh, mentioned that uh, there's going to be a several month gap before all of this uh, layoff thing starts. I'd like to ask you what we're going to do for those four or five months. Um, all I'm stating is that people are already starting laying off people. Microsoft is laying off part of 1% of their workforce of 1.8 million. Ford is laying off their part of their workforce. Amazon is laying off part of their workforce. When they start laying off and you have manufacturing and other companies in our local area talking about layoffs. And what I'm saying, we're not going to see these coming to this effect coming to fruition. You know what I mean? We're not going to see these numbers right away, but it's happening now. It's happening today. It's the four or five month gap that I'm concerned with. And not only that, but I really don't think that anybody that's working at Amazon or Microsoft or any of that is going to want to do l &A. I'm, I'm not arguing with you about the, the l and uh, There is a nursing shortage. And I'm going to oh, just... I, I, I'm not I'm trying to promote an argument either. I'm just trying to state a fact. Yeah. Are there any other comments or questions? We open it up for public comment. Yes. The, the public would like to, to speak on this issue. First, first. You were first, sir. Uh, good morning. I think I know the most. My name is Keith Judge. I'm a business agent for Teachers Local 633. I represent the mid management group of support staff and the sheriff's. Uh, I just want to say thank the commissioners for negotiating the contract with support staff. Uh, I also want to thank the commissioners of delegation for going forward with the wage study. Uh, I think the three year deal negotiated between us and the county for the support staff uh, will go a long way in attracting and retaining employees. Switching over to a new wage scale makes it easier for the, uh, the county to sort of manage and the one wage scale. We appreciate that. Uh, and it will overall help attract and retain employees. So, again, thanks for the time for taking, uh, thank you for taking the time to vote on this. Uh, if you have any further questions on those two contracts, I'm happy to answer them. Other than that, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the delegation. My name is Neil Smith. I am a field representative for the State Employees Association, the union that represents the Belmont County Nursing Home employees and the Belmont County Jail officers and employees. Our employees, yours and mine, they provide essential services for the citizens of Belmont County and in institutional settings that provide quality care 24 hours a day. Despite the myriad of challenges that these employees have faced over the last two years, the employees have performed the great distinction. Today, you have an opportunity to decide on a plan that's been over a year in the making. The commission began a comprehensive review of employee positions that you're all aware of, that I believe helps to achieve two primary objectives. First, how does Belknap County recruit qualified candidates to fill essential positions. Second, how do we retain our high caliber employees? It's my opinion that no part of this objective can have a measurable success without attaining the other. Commissioner's plan first involved an independent comprehensive study to uh, look at pay for classification on it. This study identified that Belknap County as an employer was lagging behind other employers in the region by approximately 3.7%. And it's no surprise that jail and nursing home employees are under contract for another two years, the rest of 2022 and the fall of 2023. 
yet through a collaboration with the commission, the Belknap County Administration and employees and the State Employees Association Union, we found a solution I think that meets the needs of all of us. And the plan that you consider today is the culmination of that work. Union employees have agreed to a restructure of their contracts that will reduce employee step raises currently at 5% per year to 3.6% per year for the last two years of the agreement. That's the rest of FY22 and all of FY23. Commissioners have proposed that if the union agreed to, these, to the reduction of these step raises, that they would support a cost of living adjustment based on the rate of inflation to be paid out in April of 2023. Members of the delegation, essentially what these two unions have done is agreed to give up wage increases, promises that they have today, but a promise to be made only tomorrow. I'm not an economist. Like many of you, I'm concerned about the rapid increase in inflation, which has steadily grown since March of 2021. What many people identified as the end of the pandemic clearly impacted consumer confidence and consumer spending. Housing market, private sector employment opportunities, and many other factors contributed to the inflation that has not been seen in nearly two generations. How does this affect uh, all of us, you, Belknap County, specifically? You've negotiated contracts traditionally that have relied on employee step raises, merit based step raises, to increase worker rates, workers' wages. Merit based raises are not automatic, the employee must work hard to receive them. But the inflation rate has surpassed what these employees have seen in increases over the past two years. As a result, Belknap County, as an employer, has fallen behind other employers. Today, today, I ask you to support the plan presented by the Belknap County Commissioners. It's a good plan. Please give them the resources they need to pay their current employees a competitive wage and maintain essential staffing and services. I also ask that you provide the commissioners with the resources that they need recruit from an emerging workforce the best employees, the best candidates that the citizens of Belknap County deserve. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Good morning, delegation, commissioners, chairman. I come to you as an employee of this county as well as Austin Hall. I come to you as resident of this county in Laconia and as an employee of the Department of Correction. I have the great pleasure of working here for four and a half years, almost five. In that time frame, we have lost almost two dozen employees, many of which have been my mentors and my key leadership. Now, we can't retain people. We're having people leaving not to go to law enforcement because that is a career field which many do not want to get into. <clears throat> I know there are a few law enforcement in this room, many of which have been assaulted, including myself. That is not a job somebody wants to take care of, nor do they want drugs in their body. We have had to deal with. Now, cost of living in this county is absolutely increasing no matter what. We have jobs. People want to leave Amazon. If they're of age and they're willing to do this hard job, I'm more than willing to train them and put the hours in. And nobody wants to come here. So you can say, get it, business are laying people off. If they want to train, we have the bodies, we have the openings. But we can't retain people. We're asking for a small cost of living at 5% which is not guaranteed every year. And yet people want to complain that well, it's affecting people's taxes. I can't pay taxes if I don't get paid well. If I'm putting in $50, $60 for an average SUV, where's my money going? So I greatly am hopeful that this delegation commissioner can approve this. It is greatly needed in our department. Because that way I can speak on the nursing home, but I can only assume they're hurting just once a week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with regards to the first two speakers, were they considered public members of the public? They represent unions. Is that really? Um, no, no, no. They're still members yes. of the public. Doesn't um, matter who you work for. I don't think you have to be a county resident to be a member of the public. I haven't seen any restriction on who. <clears throat> Qualifies as public. Yeah. Are there any more comments? The public. 
Mr. Chair, I make a motion we approve the cost items as presented by the uh, administrators. We have a second. Mr. Lowfield, Mr. Lowfield. We're going to, uh, should we make this a roll call? I, we have a discussion. Representative Friday, did you? I just wanted to clear my conflict that I am a county employee part time, uh, but I will be voting on this. Any more discussion? Clerk, take the roll, please. Yes. 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 Skylight replacement, am I correct? Yes, we have to open the public hearing for the uh, supplemental appropriation and then have our presentations for what they're, <coughs> what they're requesting. Okay, so we open the public hearing right now. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Uh, no, but actually, with the commissioners present uh, there. Or I'll, be, else. I'll be better prepared next time. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised. I'm the tone of the bus a little bit. <laughs> So you have the commissioner speak to what their requests are and projects. And yes, Mr. Chairman, Chairman uh, thank you. Thank you, representatives. So before you have a list of our funding requests, <clears throat> as I'm sure you all know by now, this our funding uh, sunsets on December 31st, 2024. The County Board of Commissioners have vetted thoroughly all these requests. We've had vigorous dis discussions on these requests. And we've determined that this list of requests uh, are well prioritized and necessary to the continued maintenance and operation of the county. I can start at the top of the heading and touch on these points as we go down. If you have questions, please ask. And if necessary, we have people uh, here from some of these requests who will directly speak to them. Uh, the skylight replacement is something I know we've come before you before. I'm not sure there'll be a lot of questions about this. We know it's expensive. We know the costs went up, up, and up every single day, but it's something for the nursing home that needs to be done. Are there any questions regarding the skylight request? So just, uh, just in, in general, I want to make two, two questions to make sure I'm clear. So this is funds coming out of ARPA requests, so yes. not direct taxation for county tax rate or anything like that. So any items we approve on this list will not directly affect the tax rate. So that is correct. And then secondarily, this is actually just a request for $20,000, not the 481 scary number at the top, but that uh, $20,000, that is just a differential between when you initially quoted the item and then when it actually came back as an expenses. So you're asking for 20 grand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we want to, do you want to go on to present the next issue? Well, next up we have uh, the county drive culvert. Uh, Mr. Boyle, if you come before us, please. Mr. Boyle is our facilities manager. And uh, Jim, if you wouldn't mind just giving the delegation a thumbnail sketch on this request and what we intend to accomplish with it. Um, I just want to let you know that I've only been here four months uh, to try and take care of all these proposals that we brought before Rocks. Um, the culvert, apparently, from what I've been told, is cutting into the apartments next door. Uh, so what we have to do, so that's <coughs> culvert, it's the drainage. We have to put a culvert underneath the drive aisle as you come into County Drive. So 
to be able to take the water from one side, bring it over to our field. And just a reminder that you appropriated already for this project the 35000 that was initially requested. Now that uh, uh, Mr. Boyle is here getting more price quotes, the, the prices he's getting are closer to 50000 So we're asking for the extra 15000 to complete the project. What they're telling us is the supplies are going up. Getting them is, is hard to do, so that's why we increase. Mr. Chair, just a quick question. So we approved 35,000 already. So at that point, I, I say that we had estimates saying it would be around 35. What was the delay in getting it done back then? And now we're waiting an increase in 15,000. That, that number came from an estimate two years ago when all these projects were initially um, thought about by all, all the department heads brought forward all of the requested <coughs> projects. And it was approved in the last, um, the budget process. Yeah. So the project we knew wasn't going to be accomplished because every time we tried to order it, no one could get the culverts, the size, height, or something that is needed. Then our facilities manager left, and then we replaced him, and now we have. Follow up. So are we guaranteed if we approve this today, it's 15,000, are we guaranteed that the contractors will be able to get the piping or the drainage that they need? So a month or two down the road, we don't, you're not back and forth in front of us asking for another 10, 15,000 because of an increase. No, I, I would say we're not going to guarantee, I don't think we can guarantee anything. We're trying to do the best we can. And as he's talking to contractors, they're saying 35,000 is not going to do it. You're going to be looking at closer to 50. So the project is out to bid right now. Tomorrow there'll be a site visit. We might find out tomorrow, or we probably won't find out until the bids are due. If one comes in within 50,000. And so, really, the only way to handle all these projects is we are going to keep coming back to you. Okay. Without blanket approval to spend the money, every time we learn more, we'll be back. I don't know any other way we would be able to do this. So, once you get the proposal, it could be 100,000. It could be. I Hopefully, not. I think recently you heard more like 50. Yeah. Well, let's see now, if we went right now to do this project, it would be around 50,000. Thank you. And just to be clear, so again, if we authorize 50,000, we approve this upgrade, um, it's up to that number. So it's not going to be, if also it comes in at $92,000, you'll be back in front of us for another 42,000. You'd have to be back in front of us for another appropriation before you can move the project forward. Is that correct? Thank you. Just a quick question for a department head. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have someone? I had two contractors out here looking at it. Either one of them could do, do the job, but they have to go up uh, with the proposal. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Commissioner Spanos. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, on to the Apollo Bath. Uh, this system was purchased and installed for $45,499, uh, which was $5,000 more than the original estimate, no surprise. So we're, we're requesting, how we are planning, additional $5,000. Are there any questions from the delegation? Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up, we have tuition reimbursement, and the county minister will speak to this request. With four unions and over 250 employees, the county needs an HR director. Efforts to fund a position have failed since the position was vacated in 2015. Realizing the cost of a full-time employee would be well over $100,000 a year with benefits, the Board of Commissioners is asking for $10,000 to request the county to reimburse the county administrator for attaining a master's degree in human resources and taking over the responsibilities of an HR director. Over the past two years, the county administrator has paid for and completed the degree and assumed the position. Um, workforce development is a primary goal of the ARPA funds and the board prefers not to use 
taxpayer, local taxpayer money, uh, the operating budget to, to meet their half uh, end of the deal. And instead they're asking if they can use $10,000 of ARPA funds to make this um, commitment that they have now paid half of it and would like to pay the other half. Mr. Chairman, I might state also and representatives, uh, this request is, is predicated on the fact that the county administrator has been asked to wear an extra hat with these additional HR responsibilities. Uh, there are several days in her, in her average workday where she has to stay on much later than the day she normally would to assume these additional responsibilities. So we're looking to reimburse her for her out-of-pocket expenses to get the certification. Quick question. Where the county's paying for her degree, that's what you're asking for. Does she have a contract that she has to stay so long? Or could she get a phone call tomorrow from a private company saying, hey, we're going to offer you more than um, double or you know a significant raise compared to what you're making at the county and she can leave and then the taxpayers paid for this? I would, I would thank you for the question, Representative. I would answer that question by saying this. I've, I've had the pleasure of working with this county minister for the last two years and her level of commitment to the county and her responsibility is extraordinary and i've seen nothing to indicate to me that she is anything less than 100 percent committed to serving this county for the long term okay thank you representative Carroll. representative spanos with respect to the uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars uh for the uh, the master's uh, degree uh, does this represent the um, the total cost uh, for the, obtaining this degree? And if, if not, is it just a, a portion thereof? It's a portion. No, it's a portion of I paid the full thing. I paid the full cost. The commissioners agreed to reimburse twenty thousand over two years. They did reimburse ten, and now they're asking to no. use our funds to reimburse the other half. Oh. Oh, uh, have, have you completed the uh, the master's degree program and received the degree? Yes, I have. With high honors. All <laughs> Further questions? Point of clarification. So there is no contract. There is. I have do have an employment contract with the county. It does not require me to stay here any length of time. If that's a, I would have no problem doing something like that. I would also suggest that $20,000 wouldn't get you through a third of a year with an HR director, never mind a county administrator. I just put the minutes. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't answered right, but there is no provision. Any further questions? Commissioner Spanish? I, I strongly recommend that this appropriation be interested. It's a great investment in the county. It's a great investment in human resources here. I'd like to continue to the next item. Uh, the next points are the situation with the uh, toilets in corrections in the jail. We know we have an old facility, but we also know that there's no new facility on the near horizon. We are on city water here. We pay for our water, water rates are high. Several of these toilets are leaking. Mr. Boyle is here to specifically address which ones and why this is necessary. Apparently over the last few years, we've been replacing around five a year. Uh, the stainless steel toilets, they've got to be made up special. Companies out in California. Uh, I was asked to get a price again for this year to, uh, to change out five toilets. The price came in over $10,000 a toilet. Commissioners then asked me to find out we've got about 25 toilets that have to be replaced. And if we went to try to replace, say, 20 of them, it would be a cost reduction. And it came back to $12,000 was saved by going and getting all of them done, the 20 of them done. So that's what I came, and that's what I got for them. And I think it'd be a great deal to get it done <clears> all at once because we were leaking, having an awful lot of issues. And I just want to make just to clarify that you had appropriated already 40,000 for this project. 
So the request is for the additional 160,000 to do all the work. Yeah, if we had done the 45, it would be still in Fort Worth, so she would have done five. Could you give us some ideas about why you need $10,000 for toilet? Like, what are the features that she uh, is so expensive? It's definitely it's stainless, yeah, stainless steel. Yeah, stainless steel. It's got to be made out special. Um, each one of these, we've got like left hand ones, we've got right hand ones, we've got center ones. They all have to be um, specifically made. Um, we have to have the uh, company come in, they have to measure them, send it out to the uh, manufacturer. So it's a big one. Yeah, it is a sink and toilet, I'm sorry. Um, so it's, it's, it's very expensive and it's very time consuming. Representative, Representative Lang. So if I'm glad, this is also a, a, an ability to use our funds to do cost avoidance on our tax rate, right? If I'm not mistaken, that we would normally, uh, the $160,000 cost to replace these, which is a maintenance item, um, would end up in our tax bill instead of using the ARPA funds uh, for this. So our county tax rate won't be touched. And we're we'll basically doing cost avoidance here to avoid a future cost. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct, Representative. Mr. Chairman, I might add again, we have a we have a very old, we have an aging facility here. And it's like having an old car. If you don't fix things as they break, you have a car that doesn't run all the four flat tires. What is the average uh, shelf life on these buildings? It's probably about 20 years. Yeah. Stainless steel, like anything else, will rot. I have a question. Oh, do you have one more? Yes, sir. Just to follow up on Representative Hartman Boldy's question, so I acknowledge the need for the toilet system, but are these effectively custom made toilets then? And each one has to be <clears throat> measured and, and, and certain specifications for each uh, of, the, uh, of the toilets, the total of which is how many? The total number of toilets? Oh, 20. 20 toilets, and, and they're all have to be addressed specifically and individually. Correct. So that's not something you go to home people. Right. Thank you. Any other questions from the delegation? Um, so I have one. Uh, I don't know if you can even shop this around. Is there only one company in the country that makes these? Uh, you can tell, yes. Um, you know, uh, I'm a landlord and I have to do this kind of stuff sometimes and you have to, not with, not with toilets like that, but I have to change the plumbing to accommodate the uh, what's in stock. And I, has that ever been? That, that, that would be almost impossible with what we have, you know, in the jail itself. Um, I understand what you're saying about you know, shopping around. We've gone to um, the vendors that we've been out to bid on this came back, it's the same manufacturer. Anybody want to go into business? Let's do it. Any any other questions from the delegation? Commissioner Thanos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, moving on to the hot water heater and even replacement at the jail. This is really um, a reprise of the Apollo Bath situation. When we first realized we needed a water heater, we tried to determine an approximate cost and the time it's taken to get the bids for this, the cost has gone up. So originally you appropriated 35,000. Now we're being told we'll need an additional $15,000 to go for it. So it's, it's, it's precisely like the other situation. And on a smaller extent, it's like the skylight replacement situation with the, with the smaller price tag. Any questions from the delegation? I'd like to move on to the next, next yes, project. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next project, number 31, is to repave the recreational yard uh, at the jail. And again, with the rising cost of oil, petroleum based products, asphalt is an impermeable petroleum based project, uh, product. Uh, originally, we we're looking at $28,000. But now we're going to need 
another $17,000 based on the numbers Mr. Boyles brought in uh, to complete the project. Any questions from the delegation? Quick question, maybe you can answer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Even on this increase in the payment, is it the same company that gave you the original bid or is it a different company you went to? I'm not familiar with who they originally went to. I came, when I came here, I got three companies to come in to give me bids and they all came in about the same price on this. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the delegation? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next item, project number 47, and repairing the, uh, the pillars out front. I'm sure for all of you who arrived this morning, you can see that there's been some delamination and damage to the corners. Uh, originally, you agreed to 35,000. Once again, we ran into an overage due to inflation. And so an additional $10,000 is needed. Thank you. Uh, brick and mortar you know, kind of like concrete interior substrate, I would guess. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, these projects on this list now, this is the complete list for today, is that correct? Yes, Representative. Because I believe that earlier there had been a list circulated with that number of other items that do not appear on this list. What happened to those? When you say, is this the complete list for today? Yes, for today, this is the request just being asked for today. There are, uh, the list you originally saw still exists. Many of the projects have either been completed or the amounts you already appropriated have, are sufficient or they haven't been begun yet. So there is a bigger list. There's 20, there's probably closer to 40 or 50 projects on that all, all together. So it will be brought forth in a subsequent meeting of the delegation. Yes, if any more funding is needed, yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I just want to ask some clarification because I, I was a little unclear. So what, what you're saying is of the projects we already approved, some are funded properly and they'll be moving forward as going forward. These are the next batch of projects either we had previously approved and just because of uh, timing and inflation, we have some supplemental costs and some of these projects are brand new as well. We've never seen before, never voted on it before. You haven't and, voted on it, but they've always been on the list. Right, and it, right, we have a much bigger list than, yes. you know. I would move that we approve these uh, uh, projects uh, 24, 13, 25, 7, 27, 14, 31, and 47 as presented with the understanding that the items and the amounts for each project are discrete to each project and be reallocated between uh, projects. Mr. Mr. Chair, point of order. Point of order. Um, so there's still items to be done as a public comment that we still have to close the public hearing and then we get the vote. Okay. So the motion's out of order. Go on to the, the next item. Of yes, Mr. Chair. Chair. Thank you. So, on to project number 34 the Belknap Mill HVAC AC, which has been completed. Uh, as we know, uh, the Belknap Mill is a, is a jewel to the downtown Laconia. Uh, it's on the uh, historical registry and its overall preservation has been a great benefit to the city. Uh, Laconia is also the seat of our county government. It's been the mindset of the Board of Commissioners to spread the love, so, you, so to speak, you know, throughout the county where it gives the greatest benefits. Um, I believe Mr. Kerry Janice is here to speak to this request specifically to answer any questions you may have. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank the commissioners and the delegation uh, for hearing our uh, request on behalf of Belknap Mill. My name is Peter Karajanis. I'm the co-chair of the Belknap Mill Board of Directors. Um, last September, last, excuse me, last August, a uh, year ago, we, when the, the, the ARPA funds initially came out, uh, we made a presentation and requested $150,000 for an air conditioning uh, replacement repair um, for the Belknap Mill. Uh, there is, uh, today, what I'd like to do is update you on that project. Uh, we had failing systems last year, and uh, we muscled through with uh, rented units um, for the remaining part of last year. This year, uh, we felt before the heating season came in, we had to take action. And uh, we, even though the ARPA funds had not been allocated from the county just yet, we had to, we had to make a change. We had to do the upgrade. Uh, the good news is this past May, we did install uh, nine units and um, repaired the fence that supports uh, the, 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 the of those units outside and the air handling units. Um, the, um, the good news is that the replacement cost came in under our $150,000 request. Um, the cost with receipts uh, that I we have completed the project uh, came in at approximately $112,000. Uh, bad news is, bad news, we did our mid-year uh, review at the Belknap Mill for our budget, and our budget um, has a hold of $110,000. Uh, this is strictly due to the, um, the AC project. Now, we're not a big a nonprofit. We service a lot of people in downtown Laconia and Belknap County, but we only have a $300,000 budget. So $110,000 hole going forward is a max for us. Um, so I would, uh, I would love to have uh, you carefully consider our request. Um, and we'd like to move that down to the $112,000 uh, request. Um, so that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you know, I think our, our project uh, fits the ARPA funds. As COVID related, uh, it had a negative impact on our, uh, our, our building and our, our success. It's infrastructure related. Um, the benefits to the community and our central place uh, being in downtown Laconia is, is important. Uh, the contractor for these things, these, this install uh, was a local based business. Uh, the AC systems were made here in the United States. Um, and it would significantly improve the efficiency and operating costs of the Belknap Mill going forward, uh, plus a cleaner environment inside and outside the mill. Um, so I'd like to thank the commissioners and delegation for careful uh, consideration of our, our request for the new air for the AC project that uh, has been completed. Uh, and I thank you very much. Are there any questions um, that I can answer? Questions? Uh, thank you, uh, Peter. Um, is it correct that the Belknap Mill is not owned by Belknap County? It is not owned by Belknap County. It is. Uh, it has been supported by Belknap County right since the beginning of its uh, reconstruction in 1975 when my dad uh, had asked for funds from the federal government to be uh, brought down for restoration rather than making it a parking lot. That's what they wanted to do in 1973-74 timeframe. And uh, the county stepped up at the time to accept those funds from the federal government to protect the mill. Um, and the, the, the county delegation at the time transferred those funds for restoration of the Belknap Mill. Um, I believe I brought to your attention about a year ago <laughs> A, a significant issue regarding the contract for usage of the mill and some of the uh, what I thought were very onerous requirements on groups that wanted to utilize the mill for meetings, where they were basically requiring not only the organization to commit to indemnify and have provide insurance, 
by an individual, any individual who represented it, of the using organization had to personally guarantee all the provisions of the contract. Uh, is that, are those provisions in your use contract still the same? Um, you had mentioned the, uh, the personal uh, indemnification for the person signing the paperwork. Uh, I did check on that and I, I think there's a, there's a legal interpretation there. Uh, I don't, I, 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 my understanding and my research on this uh, with the Belmont Mill uh, management and I didn't check with a lawyer, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't require that individual it requires the organization that is using it. Notwithstanding the language of the contract. Notwithstanding the language of the contract. Not with, uh, the contract says the individual has to indemnify and guarantee performance. The individual, in addition to the organization, you're saying that that's not applicable anymore. That's what you're saying. That's, that's, that's what I understand. That the individual is not, it's the organization that needs to have a liability uh, for that. So if it's if it is a wedding and there is an individual, then that person is responsible. But if there is an organization such as a uh, a political organization or somebody else that wants to come in, a company that wants to use the uh, the presentation space, it's the company that's, that's responsible. Mr. Chair. Anyway. Thank you. I, I just uh, want to understand. I mean, I, I've been in the mill. It's a beautiful place, a beautiful uh, building. Um, but you also, to a big part, this is a little bit of an economic engine to the to the community. You have weddings there on a regular basis. Yes. Not the state on occasion. We had our redistricting meeting um, at that location, so it's open for public hearings and public spaces if need. If I'm not mistaken, a Republican County uh, Committee used to meet at that location as yes, well. And um, and that uh, not only that you open it up to community events. So we have, and I'm going to butcher. I can't remember what it is. But we have a, a, like a Greek. We had the Greek day where we would yeah. have, and, and the building was open. You hold hold it open for art events and other Absolutely. events that go on. And that that building's a, a, a community asset and a county asset that that helps revive our our local economy locally on, when those events are held. Is that not correct? Yes, that is absolutely true. We and mean, one point of clarification: public, public place. Uh, for the county and uh, our community. At one point, your, your the request, the approval is for 100,000, not 112. So you guys are gonna have to find that in your not-for-profit side to make up the difference. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would greatly appreciate $100,000. Thank you. Representative Comtois. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. You mentioned something about renters. Are there renters in that building? Uh, yes, uh, there's a certain portion of our building that is uh, for rent. Uh, where we have uh, two lawyers' offices uh, that uh, use about a quarter of the total space of the mill. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's about a quarter of percent of the mill. Then there is a third floor, which is open for rent um, for events. Or, uh, we have the Cultures Guild that comes in every Wednesday and runs, runs their quilting there. Uh, we have many other organizations, uh, people from um, the industrial park will have corporate events there, uh, with weddings, et cetera. And those are rental income that we can get. Oh, thank you. Um, so when we're talking about county events and things like that, or you know, the Republican Committee or anything else, do they have they have to pay for that space, correct? There's a nonprofit rate, I believe. I, I, I don't know exactly, but it is definitely a huge nonprofit rate. Uh, I don't want to throw out a number right now, but uh, it, 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 it's fairly well. Oh. And um, with this project that you, I understand these air conditions that you had to replace, um, as in most places, they have like a common area and uh, expenses that you allocate to, you would allocate to the offices also. Um, have some of those costs been allocated to those people for their, their common space rental? Um, not specific. Not specific. Uh, the, the, the rental space for the two lawyers' offices. Uh, 
it, there's a central, there's nine unit com compressor units outside the building on, on the uh, ground floor. And there are four air handling units uh, within the building. Um, and and they, so there's four centralized. Um, so with any building that's being rented out or commercial space, usually there's a uh, cost for repairs and maintenance so that um, the people that are, you know, depending on the amount that's being rented uh, is allocated to those people for that maintenance or repairs. Um, and you're, what you're saying that is, is not in our contract with our, uh, the people who are renting. So we don't have that. I, I don't believe we have that right to people. I'm not a lawyer, but I, being the two people that are in there are lawyers. Um, I, I'm not sure I, I have the knowledge myself right at this moment to uh, justify that. But I don't think I don't think we have within our contract to go and spread uh, major issues. They're not. I, it's not an HOA type of environment. So you're not a so who so who tells a little bit more about the ownership? Are you a nonprofit? Are yes, it is a nonprofit. Uh, it's the Belknap Mill Society um, that uh, is in, is responsible for uh, managing Belknap Mill. <coughs> So, uh, without uh, unduly belaboring the point, uh, I would just like to inform the delegation that when I tried to rent the Belknap Mill for the Belknap County Republican Party meeting and spoke with the staff about it, was presented with the contract, and I questioned the requirement for me to personally guarantee it, I was told by the staff member of the Belknap Mill that unless I personally guaranteed the performance, it would not be rented to the organization, so we chose to go elsewhere. That was the position taken by the staff, and I asked to be put in touch with the lawyers who were representing Manil to try to discuss the issue, and nothing ever came of that. Well, we, uh, you know, the staff that was there, um, I'm not sure exactly who you spoke with, but um, the kind of over staff, and uh, there's we may have uh, different results, and we can we, we would love to have a GOP bank uh, meeting at the mill because it's centrally located in Belknap County. We need a public library, no charge. Our uh, executive director, Cheryl uh, Avery, uh, would like to have a comment. So the only thing I just said, I'm the executive director, that happened prior to my coming on to the mill, and that's no longer the case in any of those key responsibilities solely the corporation, either the company or the group. I have a question from the delegation. I have one. Are the uh, attorney's rents at market value and there are things like the increased cost of heating fuel Incorporate. I, I'm a landlord. I'm in the process of doing this yeah. right now. Yes. And uh, we, we okay. all, all of these things have to be taken into consideration. And I hope that you have somebody that's familiar with renting, keeping the rents where they We can. had, um, just to go back in history, um, we had, um, I don't want to say four contracts, but uh, a non increased contract from 20 years ago. It just expired. Uh, for the two lawyers what, two years ago. So we've made an, an increase in uh, and one of them, and there is an escalation clause going forward now. So uh, we, we've re renegotiated those. Uh, we, I think they were eager 20 years ago to enter into contracts to get renters in there, uh, help supplement the mill. Uh, but they locked us in for 20 years on something that was not. But we've, we've recovered from that and we've made adjustments uh, on the rental side and with increases based on. So, so are these increases that are going to be going forward, 
they based on a percentage basis because percentages are out the window the last few years on almost everything pertaining to money. Uh, so do we, do we have an option of uh, redoing the contract every two years? Not 20, I hope. No, it's, uh, I believe uh, the latest one was done for three years. Three years. The one we just signed for three years and last year was three all of us. Right. So no more. My opinion, personally, is that uh, even three years is so I have to reevaluate things every like six months. <laughs> With the heating cost and the cost of labor and the maintenance that Representative Comfort was talking about. So, did you have another question? Thank you. I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to piggyback on what you were saying um, because we didn't quite get an answer. So, with the cost of Fuel and utilities rising at the rate that it is rising. Um, you know, it's been over, it's well over a hundred and something percent increase. I'm not sure it was a double 77 back in uh, 2019 or beginning of 2020, and it's now over four dollars a gallon. Um, now, how is your increases? going to offset, are they responsible for their own heating bills or is that incorporated into the cost? Just one more to go. So they are responsible for their own electricity, we pay for their heat. And because of the capital improvements to our building, we really under a normal lease agreement, allocate those costs to the tenants, their tenants for two years, three years, five years. Those are capital improvements to our building, you know, forever. So, but we do, but we are now looking at our leases in two, three year increments. Oh. Um, thank you. Uh, based on something you just said, you said that you are passing along the cost of capital improvements, which- No, I said we're not. Oh, you're not right. Because it's our building and their tenants for whatever period of time. So we would pass the increases related to uh, utilities and that sort of thing. Any other questions from the delegation? Mr. Spanos. Thank you very much. Yeah, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On to project number 51 pertaining to the airport authority. As chairman of the board of commissioners, I serve on this board. Uh, I can tell you firsthand, uh, the airport is well maintained. It's the largest airport in the county. It's obviously of vital infrastructure importance. So the allocation of, of our funds easily fits and conforms to the criteria. Uh, the airport manager, Mr. Everson, is here to speak to this particular request with some specifics. Thank you, members of the delegation, for considering our request. My name is Mark Everson, the airport manager of Laconia, Laconia Municipal Airport. We have a need, and we discovered this, uh, it's actually been a need for some time to have emergency backup power at the airport. But generally speaking, it's overlooked because we're just a small airport. Well, as many of you know, we've been growing and not so much expanding our properties because we can't. We're surrounded entirely by wetlands. So there's only so much expansion uh, property-wise you can do, but we've been getting busier. The volume of traffic has been increasing, especially uh, as many of you are aware, jet traffic. And it's bringing uh, a lot more revenue into the lakes region entirely. So what we discovered and I became painfully aware of in 2018, we had a severe um, weather event, which knocked out our power for approximately 60 hours. And then it, you know, we did not experience flooding. We did not experience, you know, we moved the snow or ice, we took care of all of that as usual. But then it occurred to me, we were not covered for any catastrophic or rescue missions <coughs> that could have occurred. 
unfortunately did not. But we are oftentimes uh, used as an airport for the DART helicopter for ambulatory tra uh, transportation, both picking up or dropping off. Um, we oftentimes angel flights come in and out. So that if you're familiar with what an angel flight is, it's transportation of ambulatory patients, bringing them to our area or picking them up and taking them to other parts of the country. These things are not possible if you do not have a lighted airfield. Um, it's very difficult, <coughs> not impossible for air traffic to occur after dark without lights. This is something that uh, we recognized, I recognized since I've been there, a definite need for an airport to have emergency backup power, which we do not have. So therefore, if we lose power, we lose the lighting of the airfield, we lose lighting and power within the terminal building, we lose ground to air communication, meaning our fixed space operators who have powered radio based radio units are not able to communicate. We do not have a control tower at our airport. So the communication is done ground to air by radio. We, can, we do have handheld radios, but they need to be charged on a battery by, by the power that is supplied. We are definitely in need of backup power for our airport. We have proceeded to get bids and um, from three different companies and settled on uh, one contractor, Daniel Selector, which if you know the area, they're just up the road from the airport. They came through with a bid to install a 100 kilowatt generator. The reason it's so large is it was determined by engineers that we needed a 50 kilowatt generator to power the lights, the runway and taxiway lights, and another 50 kilowatt generator to power our terminal building. But that means one generator, 100 kilowatt generator. Um, it is already in the works, hopefully, to begin um, the construction, excavation, and then uh, the delivery, we hope, of the generator in November before the winter season hits us. And the total cost is $90,900. We are, uh, we have access to an ARPA fund for airports for a total of 59,000. We are requesting the balance of 31,900 from the county's ARPA fund. Main questions from the delegation. We have uh, Representative O'Hara. I just have a quick general question. How does the uh, plan is to airport create revenue? Like, what source, uh, source of income do you guys have? The primary source of income is lease revenue from the hangars uh, around. We do not own any of the buildings, we own the land. So, uh, those are all tenants of the airport. So, the primary source is lease revenue. And that is uh, supplemented by fuel flowage rate uh, for aircraft. When they buy fuel, we get a, a portion of uh, that revenue per gallon. Representative Terry. Thank you. Uh, Representative O'Hara has asked uh, one of my two questions, sir. And then I have one question for Representative Spanos. Okay. Uh, what is the total budget of the, um, of the airport? Approximately 300,000. And a question for uh, Commissioner Spanos. Uh, the language here uh, indicates uh, improvements in the past tense, but I'm hearing a description here of uh, requested funding for an improvement that has yet to be made. Could you please explain? Are, are we actually, are you asking for $31,900 for this particular project, which has not yet uh, been implemented? And if so, um, explain the difference between the present tense and the past tense of the statement. I'm confused. Thank you for the question, Representative. Uh, a clerical error, I'm sure. Um, but I'm glad a good semantic capture of the 
Uh, this is for the unpaid portion beyond the ARC funding that Mar received at the airport to install the new generator for campus. So to be made. So this is to be made, and this payment will not be made until the county uh, administrator receives an invoice. Thank and you. Then they will. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Have, we have uh, paid for twenty thousand in down payments. What fuel is this generator supposed to run on? Natural gas. It's already present. Uh, do you charge airport. landing fees at the airport to plane to land? We do not. You do not charge landing fees. Do other airports charge landing fees? Absolutely. Why don't we charge landing fees? We have determined that our fuel fee, fuel rate charge, is sufficient to be able to cover um, any fees. And it actually increases our volume of traffic and is welcomed by the aircraft owners and pilots not to labor them with multiple fees. In years past, apparently they did have landing fees, they had parking <coughs> fees, they had tie down fees, they had so many fees that it administratively was very difficult to keep tabs on. And it was determined, I believe, that by if I remember my, my records appropriately, um, in 2011, I believe it was changed over by the airport authority to remove those fees and to just charge a fuel flowage rate. Thank you for taking the question. Um, so with all of these fees that you're charging, does the airport make money? No correction, we're not charging all those fees. Well, the fuel surcharge. Okay. With the fuel fuel surcharge, does the airport make one make a profit? No, not a profit. All of our funds are we 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 go for zero budget at the end of our fiscal year. All of our funds are expended to keep the airport in operation. So so you have funds for improvements and maintenance and all of that. Um, so what you're saying is you don't have thirty-two thousand dollars for improvements and maintenance in your in your fund. We do not have that budgeted for that month. We would have to take it from something else, which would then suffer, uh, so to speak. We would need to take it from another budget item and put it into that payable. Any other questions? It seems to me, sir, that this would be a, a life safety issue. If somebody's up there drifting around and uh, running out of gas, and you've got no lights, it might be a problem. Absolutely. But no other questions? Commissioner Spanos? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On to project number 52, the Wow Trail. Um, I'm sure most of you know I've long been an advocate of the Wow Trail. Uh, Lakes Region and Belknap as a whole well, is heavily reliant on tourism. And the Wow Trail, since its inception, has been a magnet for that. A lot of we, like many others, are in the hospitality business, and many of our guests enjoy all that the Wow Trail has to offer. Uh, with respect to the uh, construction of the Peachy Loop, Mr. Beadle is here to speak to that directly. Alan, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for service. Happy September. My name is Alan Beadle. I live in Laconia. I'm a business owner in Guilford, and I've been part of the Wild Trail for about 20 years. Um, just a brief history on the Wild Trail. Uh, in 1982, the Lakes Region Planning Commission uh, envisioned a bikeway to go from Meredith to Franklin, all along state owned uh, railroad property, the right of way, along with the sewer project as well. And in uh, 2001, I met uh, the late Councillor Fred Toll, and we we created a committee, which is now a 501c3 called the Wow Trail. And I've been on that board and now serving as the co-chair for that. Uh, since that time in 2001, uh, the Wow Trail and Belmont has built four and a half miles of recreation trail, multi-use recreation, non-motorized. Although there is a gray area now with e-bikes as they progress. But we have four and a half miles of recreation trail. Um, by our last count, we had 70,000 users, um, which is about doubled since five years. We did a count about five years earlier. 
So our mission of the Wild Trail is really to take the next step to get to Weir's Beach, which is another four and a half miles in onto Meredith. It would be if we were able to implement the vision of the Lakes Region Bikeway and um, what we're working on, it would be probably one of the greatest um, rail trails that we would find in the Northeast or even the country, given the spectacular scenery and land that this particularly underutilized state-owned land travels along. August Bay, Lake Okeechee, Lake Winnesquam, the Winn Winnipesaukee River. I mean, this, this right-of-way is spectacular, but nobody can get out there, even trespassing if you go out there. So um, we'll continue to support Meredith and Belmont Tilton Franklin for the entire vision of that 20 plus section of rail trail. But I, uh, and I'd be happy to update this group individually or as a whole, if uh, you ever ask me back um, to tell you more about that project and where it stands. I'm here today, if you don't mind turning uh, that, that on, to talk about a uh, <coughs> really a, a, an offshoot of the Wild Trail, the neighborhood loop that we're calling the Opeachy Loop. And I'll put this here for the, the public. I'm sorry, it's a small, but it's a, it's a four and a half, five mile loop around Lake Opeachy that's designed to enhance the safety of pedestrian and bicycle traffic connecting neighborhoods, our state park, our public beaches, and our schools. Um, it, it's tough to see that. That's Lake Opeachy in the middle. August is the grade to the right and the Lake Winston to the left. But that's a loop connecting really the business center of Lakeport uh, down Elm Street uh, through the yet to be developed state property, Ahern Park, down Shore Drive, and getting you to downtown Laconia. So residents along the way will enjoy a safer um, travel, let's say, to any of the areas along that loop. Um, certainly visitors who do come to use the Wild Trail and have that four and a half miles will have an expanded use. But it will be mostly residents who utilize this uh, the Peachy Loop. So uh, we're working in partnership with the city of Laconia and the city of Laconia currently has received a federal grant for a portion of this loop. Uh, we're looking for funds for the very first segment, segment A. And then you have a handout. It's, I know it's hard to see this, but segment A is starting from Union Ave at Elm Street and traveling across the bridge at Elm Street to Franklin Street. We want to uh, expand the sidewalk there, and uh, we estimated that cost to be about $450,000. Applied and received 50% of that in a federal grant from the Northern Borders um, grant. So we have um, currently we have been notified that we received that assistance, 225,000. However, we need to come up with 50%, the other 50% of that. Um, I'm working through multiple local, uh, private, local, city, state agencies to come up with that and for the rest of the loop. So we're working on segment A, which we think about is about a half a million dollars. Um, but the entire project would be well over a million dollars to finish this entire loop, the five miles. So I'm here today to hope you consider that this would be a great improvement to the residents of Laconia that this passes through, which would bring um, more economic development to our community. And uh, I'll answer any questions you may have. Representative Terry. Sir? Yes. Uh, I, I noticed that in uh, the, uh, in the <coughs> narrative that you identify this um, as a, a recreational opportunity. It's uh, transportation, uh, recreational, it's both. Yes. So, if, so as I uh, examine the diagram, I'm, I'm not noticing that there are any uh, parking areas. For those who might not be in the immediate vicinity, is, is that because of the population density and there are none available, or if they are, where are they? Well, there's a couple of existing parking areas. One is we did an upgrade of the property next to the Lake Opeachy Inn. If you've been down to that uh, parking area, you'll see granite steps mm -hmm. in, a, in a park area there. That was done at uh, our cost in exchange for parking from that. A private business. So we have maybe 25 spaces there that you'll see people coming in dropping their bikes there. 
downtown has sufficient parking. You see outside the railroad the, the cars coming in uh, with bikes in the back and starting there. And there's additional parking down at Belmont. But one of the reasons for this is with the expansion that Scott Everett and, and the people are, are doing in Lakeport, um, they probably won't have enough parking, even with some of his parking garage plants. And uh, this would be a great way for people to get into Lakeport uh, and downtown, of course, on bikes. And you just walk up your bike and conduct your business. Boards. All right, so I have several concerns with this. Number one, it keeps on getting referred to as a multi-use trail. It is not a true multi-use trail. If it was a multi-use trail, we would have snowmobiles allowed on it, ATVs and other motorized, motorized vehicles, including horses as well. Um, the expansion of this, I mean, there's been a lot, a lot of controversy around the expansion of this route trail, as far as going through certain areas in Lakeport and other as 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 that do not want this to come through Correct. on their state owned property. Correct. Not on their property, on our property. Correct. Um, so there's a lot of controversy around this. As far as if you were to receive these funds, what is the public pushback on this issue? Have you done any surveys, any research? You know, on uh, we've had some meetings already, and it's interesting. The public pushback is oh my God, I don't want all this traffic coming by my front yard. Yes. And the answer is there's a lot of there's traffic now from residents and, and then there'll be, I don't know, maybe 25% more traffic. It's not it's not going to be probably that much more noticeable, but it will give a safe access. If you didn't have a bicycle and you lived in Lake Park and you wanted to, right now you got to get in the road and you've taken your life in your hands. Everyone that's knows true. people are distracted driving. So we want to get those bikes up off the road. Make it easy for you to get down to Lakeport or get down to Laconia or Ahern Park or the beach or the school. Yeah. Follow up. Follow up. Don't you think it would be more economically advantageous to the area if we did allow other vehicles on that wild trail or on us back around? Wild trail or the Peachy Loop? Um, or, no, Peachy Loop or all together. Well, I don't think neighbors want snowmobiles or horses going down the sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we do work with the snowmobile club and try to, uh, but this is not really a snow. They've got their trails. In fact, they, they're allowed to go on the rails once they have a certain amount of snow on them. Yeah. Um, and so we try to improve access as we go along. But this, in fact, we might share a piece of that at uh, the state the state property or Ahern Park. That's, that's going to be a wait and see. Uh, on that portion, which is in green on the kind of the north end, that's a wait and see to see what developer is going to, what, what are they going to want to do and how do they want to utilize this potential trail? Yeah. My, my only concern is I think we could have a greater economic impact to the area if we did allow, I mean, I don't know how many people utilize the wild trail as far as the winter goes, but right, I suppose the snows. Way well, down, way down. Yeah, um, so maybe incorporating down the road a limited area for snowmobiles or other but activities. They, they have they have access to that, uh, not the wild trail, but right next to it. Where okay. They, yeah. So they'd, they'd be on. The, the I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Try Thank you. Have you seen it with the uh, wild trails and all that stuff? Have you seen an increase in emergency services have to respond to these locations due to medical, uh, the homeless shelter or homeless some um, communities that are being built on the side or even the use of drugs. Because I can tell you right now, what I walk so far yeah. on some of these rail trails, yeah. um, I've seen trash, I've seen tents, I've even found needles. Yeah, And that's yeah. a concern to me. So it, it feels like we're supporting this behavior because it gets them off the streets and more into the woods. I mean- It's a great question. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you uh, as someone who rode the road and walked the right of way for, you know, decades now. Um, once before the bike path was there, or the, the Wow Trail, um, it was much more private. There was much, I would say, there was much greater illicit activity, and it would be much more dangerous to go, to go on there. Everyone would be trespassing on there, of course. Um, and so now we see more of it. We see the homeless issue, particularly by Isaiah 61, which is 
camp on the wild trail and um, provides you know meals and laundry and showers and so it's much more visual in that section of the wild trail and I, I, I get it. it's frustrating for me and it's it's not a problem that wasn't there before I think we just see it a little bit more um, I'll take Bartlett Beach as an example Bartlett Beach was like a hangout and still is to some degree for homeless and drug use. Um, now that the wild trail actually comes right through the beach, I see many more families, more people. It means it's safer. And, you know, maybe we make some progress at, at Barbara Beach, in my opinion. But I share your concern. Thank you. Representative Littlefield. Hi, how are Hi. you? How are you? So you said that you're asking for the money for uh, a segment, which is Elm Street, Franklin Street, correct? Right? You know, I've got a lot of feelers out. Uh, as I said, it's going to be uh, a lot of money to complete this entire project. But right now, we can receive a grant for two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and I'm trying to come up with a match for that. So that hundred thousand would help us achieve the fifty percent match to take advantage of this grant. Could you explain to us exactly, in specifics, how that money would be used? Like, sure. Well, you start with engineering costs, but uh, our goal there is to take a five foot sidewalk and make it eight or 10. Now, just recently, Scott Everett um, met with myself and city officials uh, and showed a much more ambitious project, uh, taking that more to a promenade, like 20 feet wide, with benches and so forth. People could sit and overlook like the beachy, uh, new crosswalks to get across to the businesses that are there. Uh, and that would raise the cost much more. And so we're looking at his proposal. We're trying to bring that down to what we think is. Um, but so back to your question, the costs are engineering. It's it's uh, there's drainage, existing drainage. And so when you move the curb out into the roadway, you've got to redo the drainage there. Uh, there's the cost of of asphalt um there's no additional fencing there would be some crosswalks and potentially beacon all as part of that cost and there's and there's room on the current bridge over the dam to expand that sidewalk out um, but again same type of cost thank you uh and thank you um uh, i am not a laconia Area representatives, so I, I appreciate uh, the additional information to provide uh, for me and somebody who is uh, from a distant county. Um, uh, the, the loop uh, it's my understanding that the loop will be paved, is that correct? And, and it's in all portions or a portion there. Yeah, I, we, we wouldn't pave the portion through Ahern Park. And then it would be really working with the developer of the state school property, whether they preferred a paved or just a hard pack service. So but either one is allowed for your typical bicycle. So would, would emergency vehicles, for example, be able to access um, uh, throughout the loop? Yes. Or only in certain portions? No, throughout, even on the wild right. trail now, we have some ballers, and they have keys to take the baller down and bring on a vehicle if you need to. Okay, the, the genesis here for my question is I lived in an area where uh, there was an abandoned rail line that was uh, that became part of the bike network, mm -hmm. uh, bike and walking and so forth. And it was paved. Uh, it was concerned mm -hmm. that as a result of that, that there would be an increase of crime. And in fact, it would not be unusual for me to look up at the trail and see police cars racing in one direction or another. <clears throat> reports of assaults and, and drug trafficking and so forth. So have you actually been in conversation with the police department and have they given you a potential impact for um, what development of the loop might mean for uh, any potential increase in crime and their ability to be able to respond in time to that? Yes, I, I am in touch regularly with Matt Canfield, uh, Chief of the Tony Police, and uh, Matt's out there regularly as a as a runner, his family, but um, we do have a couple of bicycle um, officers who are certified to, to ride the bike and up and down the wild trail. Um, if, if we have a letter from um, 
was Chief Gamble, I think it was Chief Adams earlier, um, that because we, we needed this for some a grant or something, but to he went on record that uh, there's less calls, there's less crime since the tra trail has been put in. You have more, you have more eyes on it. These people are out on the trail, you know, we have a lot of users on the trail. So I'm not saying it goes away, but it sometimes goes to other places. <coughs> Yeah. Thank you, uh, Alan, for taking, for taking my question. So I, I guess I, I look at this project and I know we've had some economic improvement in the area because I know at least three electronic bike, e-bike uh, businesses that have started up in addition to, I just saw the rail one where you can, can pedal bike along the rail and have access to that that runs along the wild trail. Um, so we've had some economic impact that's helped Belknap County. And I can only imagine I know when I look at as the chair of fish and game, I look at the fish and game revenues and outdoor activities are increasing. Um, we're seeing more people buy fishing licenses, and more people buy the hike safe car, those kind of activities um, that are that uh, younger crowd tend to tend to go for it. You can tell I don't do a lot of it, but um, but again, so this is an economic benefit to Belknap County, but not, it, both the hospitality, people showing up and knowing that there's a trail right there. Is that not correct? Definitely, definitely it's an economic has an economic positive economic effect for sure and and it uh it makes the community uh more attractive to a younger demographic for sure yeah, follow oh. and, and i also uh, again I, I know for myself i got four kids and we work the sectional by osborne's you know behind the behind there's parking there if you want parking if they close their gates this is there's parking you can use um, for families, it's a good safe trail to be able to walk with your family and not have to walk down Route 3, um, you know, kind of kind of activity. So I, I think that there's also a significant economic or significant impact just for Belknap County residents to be able to utilize families that want to go for a walk with a kid on a nice day like today and have a place, a safe place where they're not worried about cars running down. You got a little three-year-old you're trying to chase, you know, at the same time. So I, I do think that this is a good, both for the citizens as well as an economic impact, a good investment. So thank you. Any other questions from the delegation? Oh, sir, I, I have a couple of questions here. Um, you know, it seems to me that when this, this was all getting started, it was going to be completely funded by donations. Is that? No, that was never true. No, no. Okay. We, uh, we, we I could buy on federal information. funds for sure. Eighty percent of the first phase. Um, well, actually. Uh, the first phase turned out to be it was we were we did have an eighty percent tap grant that we had uh, you know a competitive grant that we were awarded at that time it was the uh, American Reinvestment Recovery Act came along and we were shovel ready so our timing was shovel ready in that so we could accept those funds and release our tap grants back to the state of New Hampshire to distribute to other projects. that was phase one phase two was a um, there was some federal grants, there was uh, Maconia TIF district, the city was involved, and of course, private donations. Okay. That um, makes up a small portion. Um, law enforcement costs and cleanup costs. Uh, seems to me this is going to cost taxpayers uh, additional money. I've seen articles in the paper where they're uh, trying to get money to clean up the, the trail. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some letters to the editor, but uh, we we do the uh, maintenance. The wild trail pays for the. I'm glad you brought it up because we pay for the maintenance along the trail. We pay for the mowing. Uh, we have regular volunteer network that picks up trash, and people just go out and pick up trash. It, it goes out, it comes back. We have graffiti. Uh, we have a guy that when graffiti goes up, it comes down, and we put on this uh, acrylic product on the mural so that we can wash it off. But it it continues to happen. And we can the surprising things it continues to get cleaned up and picked up. You know, uh, a few years ago, I told by your own motors, I, I own a house over there, and somebody burglarized my house and stole all the copper out of the basement. And it was nighttime. And I went on the wild trail from Irwin Motors to Lakeport. And I don't usually scare very easy, but I was uh, looking over my shoulder the whole way. It was like nine o'clock at night, dark out. Yeah. Um, has there been any consideration to possibly having a curfew after dark or something for, for the residents around there? Well, it is a city park and, it, and it's closed after dark. Um, doesn't mean 
people don't go there, but it's closed. People go to Bartlett Beach after it's closed, and then Vaughn Beach after it's closed, but it is technically closed. I mean, we, is that something that you think could be enforced? You know, there must have been 50 people between those two places. I almost got stoned going through there. Just to that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, you know, it's uh, it's unfortunately a sign of the times we deal with. I, I I will I will say that I think it's a safer place with the trail coming through, with more people coming through, uh, and I say that based on I used to be out there and use it before there was a trail, and uh, that was much scarier to be out there. Then, in my opinion. You know, uh, there, there's uh, been these uh, the, the, the controversy where it's going through people's front yard between the, the view of the, the lake or whatever. Uh, the, these people that went and uh, paid real good money for this, these properties and uh, expecting privacy and, and quiet. And now we're putting, putting part of this in between there. I think that it uh, depletes their uh, property value personally. Uh, I know one guy over by the Belknap Mall. He has a business over there. Larry Joyce, I think, is his name. I know Larry. I spent a lot of time working with him. Yeah. Um, I do some work for him. And uh, I was over there, and uh, the Wow Trail goes like from here to Representative Boya from his deck. That's where it starts. Yes, and, uh, this house so actually was in the right of way, and we had, yeah, and so we went, we got permission from the state to go further away, but he and I, he and I discussed the fact that uh, if some less than desirable people were on the wild trail at night, and he might be home, he might not be home, and uh, they're up on his porch trying to get into his house, they're like 10 feet from his porch. Um, the cops come and the guy says, oh, I was just strolling down the wild trail. And he was actually trying to burglarize the guy's house or worse. But, but, you know, that, that's just one instance. But I mean, I'll use that same example. The guy would be walking down the rail. It's only 10 feet further away. And um, at night, trails close. But, you know, this is a railroad track. So um, I have, we have people who, they don't like the train. They don't like the whistle of the train. They don't like the diesel smell of the smoke coming by their property. That's loud. Uh, that's coming right through their property. Snowmobiles come through there in the wintertime. So this is just an expanded use of that, of our state-owned land that everyone <coughs> bought a house and they didn't do their due diligence and knew that they were next to a 66 foot wide right-of-way corridor that has a train and a snowmobile. And, and in 1981, the, had a bikeway proposed right through there. So I, I know people are upset with that. And I can tell you that even people who are upset can fight us, and they have in the first two phases, they become fans after it's in. And they're like, you know what? This is pretty nice. Let's get the grandkids down. Let's get a bicycle. Let's ride into town. It's something they've never done before. But it's hard to, you know, if you've never used the Cape Cod Rail Trail or the Burlington Rail Trail or any of the other rail trails to get around and and recreate, and many people use it for transportation as well. Um, it's hard to understand the kind of traffic that's coming through. I think we get a bad name because of Isaiah 61 in that downtown pocket, but <clears throat> as you get away from the city services, the county services that are provided to um, some of these people, it's it's uh, people that you'd be happy to be by your property. Okay. Uh... My, my, my last thing that I'd like to speak about is uh, several years ago, I uh, when, when I was going down that trail trying to get a guy with my cop, I ended up catching my way. Um, I spoke with two unnamed police officers. I don't even know if they still work here, but uh, they told me that that was uh, the chosen route of criminals to escape law enforcement because they, they're less likely to get caught there. I don't know if those two, I don't, I don't know their names, I'm not being coy, I just don't know who they were. I just asked you know, what they thought of it. And that, that was their opinion. And uh, so it could be true. I mean, I, I don't use, you deny 70,000 users a year because a couple of uh, vandals 
use that as their escape route? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'd like to find out how that seventy thousand number came about, and a couple yeah, of, and a couple of criminals. I think that the, those numbers, if one is a little short, one is a little tall, but that's just my. Well, I think criminals <laughs> take the easiest way out, whatever that is, right? Absolutely. I, mean, I, I don't think we're going to solve that problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a dead horse. I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair, thank you for taking my question. I have uh, two. Um, one is eminent domain used to get on any part of the wild trail. No. Second is I heard you say that um, we have um, police officers that are on bicycles. Um, and with the expansion of the wild trail and everything else, I'm just wondering. Um, what type of resources this will put on the uh, police, the criminal justice system, um, hearing some of the things that I'm hearing about uh, the past the criminals, increased drug activity in some parts of it, you know, possible uh, people, um, you know, burglarizing homes and everything else. So what type of resources will that put on the criminal justice system? Well, I think the majority of, of the issues are right down there. Right where the police station is, and I think if Chief Gansel was here, he would say um, that I think he would agree with that statement. Is the longer that trail gets away from the, uh, the center of homelessness, I mean, Rotary Park in Laconia is a favorite spot. Um, it's like whack a mole game, so we move them out of here and they move over there. It's a very difficult problem. I don't. I would say that there's not going to be any additional resources uh, on the PD with a longer trail. I, I don't see it. Uh, in general, studies would show uh, that it's it's safer because there's many people out there. I'm not saying at nighttime when people shouldn't be out there, but during the daytime when people are out using the trail, it's a safer area. Oh. Thank you. Um, so, Chief Gansel, you just made a good point. So during the day, it's really safe. But at nighttime, when the criminals really truly come out for the activity, yep. having uh, an easier access to move around and um, how safe is it going to be? Well, I mean, because that's when you got to put the. It's one. probably easier for a criminal to ride a bike down there at night than ride a bike on the existing right of way as is, because we would pay it. So it would be an easier bike ride. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any are there any signs uh, when when the trail closes? Are there any signs telling yes. people there are now? Um, no. uh, I have I, I have a problem with uh, money being used, government money being used to combat citizens that are opposed to this project. These uh, these private citizens that don't want this going through their front yard. Has takes away from their enjoyment, privacy, and uh, they. they Can I just make a point though? That would be on the extension of the wild trail up by the state of Rivers Beach. That's where the pushback would be. The people in, in, in this neighborhood. I think it's more than one person like this my opinion, but what I've heard from people. Not only that, but if we, if we do this to get there, that's kind of like the divide and conquer of the public. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. So I feel about it a little bit. Any other questions, Representative Lang? I just want to clarify something. There was a talk about increased drug activity. I'm pretty sure no family member saying, hey, now that we have the wild trail, let's go shoot up some heroin. Um, but that's not happening. We're not creating drug dealers by this. However, uh, I remember, I, I want to say it was 35 years ago when I was here, and, and Weir's Beach, right? The, the beach itself, the beach head, used to be a gathering spot for this until we put some money into it, some effort into it, and cleaned it up and put... Um, and, and, you know, it became a, a more of a family-based uh, uh, situation. So, I mean, I, I think that to, to, to um, Alan's point, I think that people move, right? They congregate where they think they're safe. And so I know that I've seen law enforcement riding their Laconia PD, riding their bikes down the wild trail. When I was at, at the train station there, they were coming down and going, heading down the other direction. So I know we have resources for law enforcement to be able to patrol that just like any other street we can <laughs> Um, and so, um, again, I, I want to be clear, we're not creating new criminals because the wild trail exists. You may be creating a new place they move to, 
And that's going to be the nature of everything we do. Whenever we build, a, we, we take down a parking lot and put up a, a, a high rise or put up a building, people are going to move out of there and, and, and congregate somewhere else. So I just wanted to make sure that we're not talking about increased activity that we're creating criminals, but we're in fact giving a safe place, a safer place, especially during the day for families and citizens and tourists, tourists to be able to use a, a, an a, a amenity in our community. So thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Joseph. Do you think the, the, the citizens of Lakeport, Lakeport, Lakeport would appreciate any support you get? Thank you. Commissioner Spanos, would you like to move on to number 35? I would, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, uh, replacing phones, we have um, antiquated, unreliable, in many cases, broken phones. Uh, Jamie, I think you would go with that. Yeah, I can just tell you the phones, the phones that we have, uh, there are 82 of them that have not been replaced countywide in every department with both uh, facilities, meaning the courthouse and here. Of the 82, they are slowly dying. They're, they're really 10, I'm going to guess about 10 years old. Uh, the numbers stick. Calls get dropped. It's just a daily frustration, and and they're uh, dying on an unpredictable schedule. We don't have money budgeted for them. The phones cost about three hundred and fifty-five dollars each. So if someone's phone dies, uh, that that's a hardship on that budget. Then all of a sudden we're trying to scramble to figure out what else we're going to do. So this is a new request because the ARPA fund money exists to improve the facility, uh, there is, we're requesting to replace all the phones, buy them all, get them all replaced, so we don't have this issue um, where they're breaking piecemeal over the next several years' budgets. And Mr. Chairman, we'd like to do this or there's another cost increase. <clears throat> Are there any questions from the delegation? Oh, uh, I've got a quick question. Is there, is there no, no. Is, are these phones for personal as well as public use? Or are they strictly? No. no, these are county phones for people to do their jobs while they're working. Okay, thank you. Representative Trotty? So you, you're saying these aren't like cell phones that they're going to be taking. These are like phones that are on the desk That's right. that they're going to be taking the calls and calling out from, That's correct? Right. Thank you. Any other questions from the delegation? <clears throat> And finally, our last project request, sewer lines, as some of you may know, but probably not all, we had a major backup uh, yesterday. And Rowles was here for very close to 24 hours. So uh, they were able to open the blockage after considerable effort. We can only imagine how much that's going to cost having that company here for that length of time. And also, uh, the city was kind enough to let us know that for their services yesterday, and they were involved with the with the blog, uh, they will be sending us, and I quote, a substantial bill. So this is a line item that I think is especially important. Uh, these lines are, in most cases, 50 or 60 years old. Um, and I, I think this particular, and we don't know, it could be more than 80,000. Jim's going to, you know, send out some RFPs on this with your approval, but uh, it's a bad situation as you know when sewer backs up. We had this this situation at the sheriff's department twice and unfortunately they had carpeting there, not tiles. So um, I can't think of a better use of our funding than for this particular item project number 56. So you told that to that just the you know this the nursing home. So we've got two major backups in there. Um, we have the uh, Alliance the camera actually, and it's just the pipes have deteriorated. It's just, you know, there's nothing we can do. We have to rely on them. Uh, we're going to continue having this issue. But as I said, it's a nursing home. Are there any other questions from the delegation? I think so. This point, uh, open up a public comment. Oh, for... public comment. Yeah. 
Mr. Chair, declares public comment about the supplemental appropriations, not in general. Yes. So, about the appropriations specifically. My name is Lois Kesson. I am from Laconia. Uh, I just confirmed this with uh, Mr. Carasianis. In 1972, my father, his father, and Norm Wheat stood in front of the bulldozers to take down the Belknap Hill. And they stood there and did not allow a cat to happen. I'm also a member of the Heritage Commission in Laconia. The mill is one of our tools and it makes money for us and it should be kept up. And I urge you to fund this money in the, in the names of uh, Karagiannis, Kesson, and Weeks. Thank you. Excuse me. Please spell your last name for the rest. K E S S I N. My father was Nathaniel Kesson. And it's Mr. Norman Weeks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ian Parkhurst. I'm a resident of Guildford. I want to say that the Wild Trail is like the best thing around here. I use it every day. I have my bike on my rack and my team drive in. I was going today. I'm still trying to go. <laughs> going a little later. And I actually do with friends. We do the Wild Trail. We go down Scenic Drive. We come back up scenic park, we go to Pruner and Park safely. We go out on 106. And my friend yesterday, because they had just repaved it, was a deep drop. She fell into the road. Luckily, there wasn't a car coming. So we need trails for us to continue to do longer rides than just a couple of miles here or there. I think it would bring more businesses. I used to live in Derry. I used to ride that trail. It's gone to 20 miles. I wish it was up here. So I would go, we'd ride to one end, have lunch, ride back. It, and we didn't see any impact to the neighbors. We were very respectful. There are a lot of us out there. I have friends from other parts of the state. They'll say, oh, where, what trail should we meet in today? And we go to that town, we have lunch. We go to a different town, we go to a different place to lunch. It's, it's a, there are a lot of people that we come here and use those trails even more so than today. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bob McLean. I'm from Guilford. Um, I got a couple of questions. Um, I attended the Gunstock uh, Commission meeting last night, which went very well. But uh, a couple of questions that came up was at the end, uh, Commissioner Doug Lambert stated that he was being sued by a former commissioner. Why, 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 it has to be to the appropriations. So right now that we're taking public comment on the supplemental appropriations request. There'll be a generic public comment at the end. Oh, sorry, I can come back up there. Yeah. Sorry. Hello, I'm Colleen Tessier um, from Belmont, New Hampshire. I just have a question about this money that is being appropriated. Is it new funds from the upper program or not? Ones that have been allocated already. Well, I mean, thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Money is set aside. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments pertaining to the tax funds? Close to public hearing. Do we need a motion for that? Nope. Just your gavel. Close to public hearing. <laughs> Uh, so we have a motion. Mr. Chair, can I make, make a recommendation on it? We're, we're, as we move into the voting mode? Um, I, I think based on the comments and conversations we had, I'm not sure everyone's 100% on every single item. And what I'd recommend is we do a motion for project and just to show hands real quick and rather than go to a roll call and then um, and just move through each project. So unless someone just wants to move the whole $483,900. Everybody uh, Oh, nope. Juliet made a motion. All in favor? Oh, oh, hold on. Nope. Back up. Juliet made a motion to move all four hundred eighty-three thousand nine hundred dollars, and, oh, and Travis seconded. Um. Okay. Is there any uh, discussion on that? So, so we're not going by project. This motion is, but just pass everything. Okay. Okay. 
Mr. Sylvia. Well, I would say that um, some of these projects are very important. At least one of these projects is contrary to the Constitution, giving money to private organization. I expect that they all pass. Voting on all of them and all of them against. That's a constitutional question. Could you, could you care to uh, expand on that? Which? Uh, the bill not be able to say a private organization. Thank you. Representative Pompa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a question as to once this $483,000 spent, <clears throat> how much ARPA funds are left? About 11 million. We have, all right, uh, some has been spent. It looks like uh, maybe 3 million has been spent. We had 12 million to begin with, roughly. We spent about 3 million. So this uh, will be another half a million. Oh. How much has been, I guess maybe I should rephrase it. How much has already been allocated? All of it has been allocated. There's, uh, I have uh, 11. Point nine million. Yes, um, I know that at the last, um, well, not the last meeting, but previously, our meeting, um, we voted. There was a majority of people voted to give a million dollars to pay a parking lot at Gunstock. One point three million. One point three million dollars. Yes. And I was at that time, Commissioner Scano. She said if we allocated those funds, the solar project would go by the wayside. Which in I don't believe that's the record. So that's part of the interruption. Oh, but I'm just trying to clarify. That's what I'm trying to find I mean, out. The, the, the board of commissioners have a lot of work to do with the solar array project. We have a lot of questions. It's been taking us a long time to get those questions answered. Solar array is in play, but only after our concerns with return on investment and long term maintenance are addressed until we cost. Oh, okay. Thank you. So it's my understanding once your concerns are addressed that we will still have money left because the solar array, when I understood, because all of this 11.9 million has been allocated to a project, was that when you when you, you said that when we gave the money to Gunstock, that took away some of the monies for the solar array. Is that correct? No, it isn't. Uh, I was just going to say the 11.9 that's been allocated, the total amount of the ARPA funds, that includes two and a half million estimated for solar arrays. We've just begun a meeting with a couple of vendors, and there will be a long, lengthy process of meeting with vendors, proposals to board of commissioners, and then uh, in order to get funding, there would be a meeting back here asking for that money to be appropriated. Thank you for that information, because my biggest concern is, is a lot of these projects, I mean, some of these projects, I mean, they're, they're essential that we have on here. However, in my personal opinion, the paving of a parking lot was not essential. However, reducing electric costs at the county, which would further reduce the reduction on utilities for, which would be, then be passed on as a savings to taxpayers, is a higher priority of anything. Um, so I just want to make that statement. Point of order, Mr. Chair, where <clears throat> my motion is to move on all items, to vote on all items as approved. No discussion. <coughs> so we haven't, we're not voting on the items yet. If, if I may, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so again, the, the with the motion that was made of the three hundred eighty-three thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, it would approve all the projects that have been presented before this delegation. I think to represent Comptois' question, I, and it, it, I don't think it's out of order. I think the question is if we allocate $483,000, what's its impact on other projects? So we know whether or not we should be voting for the 483 million. I think that's where she was trying to get to. Exactly. Thank you. Representative Woods, I think, was next. 
So I like a lot of this stuff. I do have some great concerns about the wild trail, being a Laconia representative and speaking with constituents in the area. There is a lot of safety concerns involving the wild trail, as well as the drug activity and homelessness. Um, I don't know how I'm going to vote on it yet, but I just wanted to make that point. Representative Terry, just to Representative uh, Lang's uh, clarification of the motion, which was not um, disputed, uh, I think it might be helpful if, because we're voting on a motion to approve four hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars, that the motion, the mover, the maker of the motion, and the seconder consider um, amending the motion so that it is project per project. We have 13 projects, 13 discrete unrelated projects, the total of which is $482,000. And I think the concern here is you wanna make sure that those of us who are gonna vote for this, although I prefer the vote, that's not the motion on the floor, I prefer to vote for all 13 individuals. But the motion on the floor is that they're all wrapped up into one. And so I would, I would really appreciate it if you could clarify by indicating that the amounts are the sum total of the 13 and that no funds are to be expended from one project for another project. Because the way that the motion is stated right now, you can spend the $483,000 all on one project if you wish to do so. It's not clear. So I'd like to ask the maker of the motion and the seconder to make it clear that the amounts are per project totaling 483. Right, so how would we word it so it's per? We're both, we want to vote on all of them at once, but per, like you said, per project. Yeah. I think what you want, may I? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I think what you, I think what you want to do is you want to ask that we approve all thirteen projects, the total, some total of which is four hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. If you say that, then it is clear that we're approving each of the thirteen projects as presented, the total of which is four hundred eighty-two thousand. That makes it clear. That's exactly what. Is it in order to uh, to settle the question? Um, so, well, you know, you got another motion. Um, the answer is yes. Yes, I can make a motion. Right? So, you can make a motion. So, you want to settle the question? Is that so, here's my motion. My motion is that we vote on project number 24, 13, 25, 27, 14, 31, 47, and 56. Well, can you do that again so I can circle accordingly, start at the top? 24, yep. 13, yep. 25, yep. 27, 14, 31, 47, and 56. If we vote on those as a block, that will eliminate a whole bunch of voting. Um, I don't know what the dollar amount on that is. I haven't added it up. So whatever that dollar amount is. But if we just vote on those particular projects and allocate the amount requested per project, I think that would suffice. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Point of order. Yeah. 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 If this motion is seconded, it becomes a substitute motion and supersedes the previous motion if it is approved. So this motion is a proper motion and it's seconded and becomes a substitute motion because what it does is it affects the first motion and negates. I've seen that the state house when a, when a motion has been severed and that seems like what this is. It's a substitute motion. I can amend my motion. I will have to amend. Of Representative Lang, call on Mr. Sure. So on a procedural basis, I, I think you can, the motion is always open to amendment. Right, so once you make a motion, so her her uh, representative Comptoir is basically a motion to amend the existing motion to approve just this subset, and then the balance is still on the table for discussion and anything else. So it's not a all or nothing. So if we approve these items that she said as an amended motion, and we adopt that amended motion, then we can go back and discuss each of the remaining projects uh, any other way we want. Do you agree with that? As originally stated, the motion was tantamount to a substitute motion. Representative Lang has suggested that it be an amendment to the original motion. If, in fact, the maker and the seconder are agreeable to the amendment, then we can go forward and we have it be a part of the original motion. Otherwise, we have to vote on the amendment first. We need a second. The first, oh, we need a second on this. 
Unless they wipe out their original motion and accept the as a friendly new motion. I think it's just second and Yeah, I'm just giving you the options. Thank you. So what we're gonna are you uh, amending your I agree to the amendment. Second. Mr. Chair, to be clear, the, the current motion that's on the floor now that's amended is, is to approve project 24 for 20,000, project 13 for 15,000, project 25 for 5,000, project 27 for 160,000, project 14 for 15,000, project 31 for 17,000, project 47 for 10,000, and project 56 for 80,000 on top of the existing approvals we've already done. Am I correct in that motion? You don't have any other approvals. Huh? Oh. Yeah, we previously approved. These are just additions okay. to those okay. amendments to those for the previous. So, am I correct, Kevin? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, are there any, is there any more discussion? We have a first and second. No further discussion. We want to show hands. Almost, show of hands. Everybody think we can. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, I make a motion we approve project number. We'll, we'll go through the rest of them. Let's skip number uh, seven for now because I'll give you a heavy debate. And I'll move into project number um, 51 and approve the $31,900 for the airport authority. It'll be my motion. Do we have a second? I second. second on uh, project 51. Mr. If I may speak my motion again, I think, Chair, you said it best. This is a life safety issue. Um, this at, this is an asset to Belknap County. Um, as it's a public entity that, that works as the airport authority. Um, they receive state funds. Uh, so receiving county funds is no stretch. And I think the life safety requirements uh, necessitate a positive vote on this. Thank you. I don't know. Do I get discussion on this? Or Anybody the, wants to? Yeah. Discussion on Project 51. Can we do this with a show of hands? All in favor? Okay, are you saying no? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair, move on the project number 55, the replacement of phones. For a total of thirty thousand dollars, and I move we uh, approve that align that for project fifty five for thirty thousand dollars. We have a second. I'll second. Representative Littlefield seconds. Uh, in short, again, I, this is a cost avoidance item. We're using ARPA funds to be able to replace what, in the end, would be an operational expense somewhere down the road that would go directly against taxpayers and the county rate. Um, by doing it this way, it doesn't affect the county rate. And I think it, uh, it's, it sounds like it's a necessity within our agency. We're having bailing phones, and this gives an opportunity just to do that. Okay. Uh, Representative Lord. Any more comments? All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Chair, if I may. I'll make a motion we approve. Uh, project number 34, the uh, Belknap Mill HVAC system for a total of $100,000. I guess second, I'll speak to that. For the second, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we heard a significant amount of conversation around this uh, this building. Um, this is a historic building in our, in our community. Um, it's open to the public. We use for public use on a regular basis and brings a significant economic advantage when we have these public events. Um, the Crafters Guild and all those things. And as I said, we've even had the state uh, use this building for a public meeting space. 
and uh, the ability to make uh, put the HVAC system in there to maintain that building, I think, is uh, money well spent by the county to improve, uh, again, economic development within the community, as well as uh, just allowing the building to be used by our citizenry. Okay, so uh, all in favor? I am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I may, I, I'm going to uh, motion to approve project number 52, Wild Trail. If I get a second, I'll speak by motion. Second. If I may, Mr. Chair, speak to that. Thank you. So again, we had extensive, uh, I, I thank Mr. Beadle for coming and um, speaking to this. While there are some downsides of this uh, expenditure, there are also significant upsides to this expenditure. Again, we, I talked a little bit about the fact that we had some economic, you know, some economic impacts. Uh, we've, we've raised, uh, like I know, three e-bike agencies that opened specifically near the Wild Trail to allow them to be able to service the tourism, tourism and local uh, citizenry here in our county. Um, I know, again, as myself, as I said, I, my family, I've walked that trail with my kids. Uh, when they were young is it gives a nice safe place during the day to be able to bring young children and be able to not worry about roads um, and, and the and the roadway. Um, so I, I think this expenditure, um, while I understand the the um, the controversy over some people may not want this near their home, I, I trust that the uh, Wild Trail Committee will make all the appropriate changes and necessary needs to work with the citizens to make to mitigate those factors. And I think the balance way outweighs the, uh, the pros, way outweigh the cons of the spec. So I'd like to have a hundred thousand dollars spent for that project so we can continue to see these kind of activities move forward. Representative Boyce. Um, I am going to vote yes on that for the time being. I would like to sit down with Mr. Beetle at some point about possible the rest parts of the expansion and have some discussion about constituents' concerns about the whale trail, but I will vote yes. So I am um... I am very concerned with the, the people that are on the wild trail. You know, uh, you know, if I just spent 400 grand for a house and expecting privacy, uh, I'm, I'm very concerned with them. They're not going to have the privacy. They're going to have all these people. You know, it sounds like it's both ends of the spectrum here. That we're, we're getting thousands and thousands and thousands of extra people, but there's not going to be many going by their house. It's a little confusing for me. Uh, so I'm consequently voting no. Wow, Representative Terry. So uh, to Representative uh, Board's uh, desire that the uses for the trail be expanded, uh, will this uh, commissioner bounce uh, with respect to the future of the of the, of the trail? Yes. And with respect to the desire expressed by representative boards that the usage in the future be expanded to include uh, horses and snowmobiles and various perhaps and sundry other types of uh, modes of transportation uh, would the would the trail be within the jurisdiction of the city of Laconia and would the city of Laconia ultimately determine whether or not there would be expanded usages permitted on the trail. Or is, is that correct? I want to make sure who the you are correct, jurisdiction is. Right. That would be a matter to be taken up by the executive council. In the home. Executive to, council to, to expand uses would have to rule on that. Of the components of the wild trail that are on uh, city property. Um, if I may, oh, please. Yeah, the, so they're the governing authority. Yes, sir, they are. yes. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, with your permission, I, I just want to address uh, people. I know you have concerns about the wild trail, and I certainly respect your opinion on this. I just want to point out, for example, that as far as expansion bringing additional criminal activity, as you know, uh, Ahern State Park had a problem where uh, a, a porta potty was thrown into the lake. My point is, Mr. Chairman, Representatives, knuckleheads will be knuckleheads. Expansion of services, expansion of the wild trails, I, I deeply believe that does not change the, the overall equation here at the core. Um, 
bad people will always do bad things regardless of whether or not where they're at is larger or smaller or bigger or whatever. So I, I appreciate you letting me state that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, in response to that, I, I'm kind of a numbers guy and uh, kind of a percentage as far as I'm concerned, uh, the good guys and the bad guys. So the more good guys you bring in, the more bad guys you bring in just because that's how it works. But, uh, like other things. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to vote against this, although I can see the upside for citizens during the daytime. My concern is more in the evening um, when the nefarious folks really come out to play and where it's so close to homes. And also, um, you know, I, I truly believe that as the economy gets worse, there's going to be, we're going to see more um, activity that is not positive for our communities, unfortunately. So last I, I, I it's kind of a question for Mr. Beetle back there. Um, but if I if I understand everything he said correctly, we're really talking about they got a federal grant of 200,000 and change, and that this hundred thousand and that was for segment A. If you look at your little map there, that little red section that goes from Union Ave across the Lakeport Bridge there, that like, like the fellows and over that bridge to widen. We're not talking about the entire orange, purple, green, red, yellow parts of the trail, we're talking about that one red segment that says A, and that we're going to be expanding that sidewalk and making that area more, I'll call it a beautification project, if you want to call it that, um, a beautification project to make that better for our citizens who are crossing that bridge and safer for our citizens that are crossing that bridge and walking that area. So I want to be clear, we're, we're careful that that whole project is a multi a million dollar plus project, but we're not talking about the whole project. We're talking about allocating $100,000 to use to reach the 50% goal to be able to do that one little segment, segment A, which even by itself makes the area safer and better for all of citizens who need to walk in and, and congregate in that area. So I, I just wanted to make that clarification point that, and am I correct, Mr. Beadle, in that conversation? You are. Thank you. So with all due respect, Representative Lang, I look at that as uh making a very nice super highway to go off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> comments, questions? So I guess we're ready to vote on this. All in favor of the $100,000 for the wild trail, raise your hand. So, Mr. Chair, okay, sorry. Uh, one last motion. I'll make the motion when we have a discussion. I'm not sure which way the direction will go, but I'll move to approve uh, number seven. Um, and if I get a second for that for a total of $10,000, then I'll speak to it. So, second. you got that, uh, Representative Bolia? I'm sorry. Yeah. Number seven to, to accept number seven. Uh, motion by Representative Lang, second by Representative Lang. Oh, Frank Wood, sorry. So, again, Mr. Chair, if I can speak to this, and, and part of this will maybe involve commissioners. So, um, my understanding from what was presented to us is the commissioners committed to paying for the $20,000 for her uh, for. for her to get some certification in HR. We all know that HR is a pretty important issue and making sure you do everything right because if you do it wrong, you're gonna get sued. And so uh, it's important to have somebody who has the knowledge and the skill set, and that uh, Ms. Shackett's gone out and gotten that, gotten that and that the commission has agreed to pay for that. What we're really looking at doing is using ARPA funds instead of straight out county tax dollars to pay the second half of the commitment that the commission has made. And tell me if I misspoke that, but my understanding is what you said is that what we're really doing is instead of using, uh, again, county tax dollars to pay this, we're using the ARPA funds, which allow for workforce development to pay for this. And we're meeting a, a promise that was made by the commissioner. So I, I think it's an appropriate thing. I have what's probably an odd question. Do you, uh, do you get paid for both positions or do you get paid for one position or do you do one of these positions part time? And I just I'm curious is about payroll. 
and it came from one position to the first position, and that was the deal that there would be no increase in my pay for accepting the second position. Is that the, the lower, that's obviously the higher paid position? Yes, I believe, yes. So you're not- you're We had, used to have an HR director, so you had a county administrator anyway, and then we had an HR director. When that person left in 2015, uh, every request to fill that position to provide funding for an HR director has been denied. It's been very difficult. We need an HR director. We have four bargaining units. We have a lot of personnel matters here. So finally, the commissioners got tired of adding uh, 120,000 or so to the budget every year and said, you take on these duties. I was doing it, frankly, by default because it has to happen. So to the best of my ability, without any formal education, I was doing the best I could. Um, and the commissioner said, we get your formal education, you pay for it, all of it, get your degree, and we will reimburse $20,000 to you. We will not give you a pay increase for taking on this responsibility. So that's what has happened. Just to let you know, I'm not against this in any way, shape, or fashion. I hate being one speaking to it, but I'm the only one here. Very, very simple um, question that I, I just was curious. Are there any other questions? Mr. Chairman, maybe I would may just add um, one of the advantages the commissioners have over the legislators is we're here on a more daily basis working with administration, department heads, etc. So we see firsthand. Well, you can't, and it's certainly not your fault, the value of this multitasking on the part of the county administrator. The $20,000 was money, in our opinion, from the board's team, to be money extremely well spent. And in addition, we were very pleased and impressed to learn that the county administrator finished the program with eyes on it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion, discussion or questions? I guess uh, we're ready to vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. <laughs> Next up, Mr. Chair, I think we have other business, and under that other business with some vacancies you want to talk about? Yes, sir. If I may? Please. So um, we have, with, I had spoken with the Speaker of the House and the um, Representative Howard's resignation has been accepted and Representative Howard had two, two positions within our delegation that are now vacant, one of which was he was the chair of the executive committee and he was the vice chair of our delegation. Um, and so I, I think we should backfill those roles, um, make sure that they're, they're covered and we have all of our, our leadership positions filled. So to that, if I to that end, I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Representative Huff as the vice chair of the delegation. That is a motion. A point or what? I guess it's a point. I made a motion. Have a second. We have discussion. I got another motion. I would like to make a motion that we appoint Representative Lang as the assistant chair. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do you, do, I should have asked, are you gentlemen willing to accept these positions? Sure. Are there any other nominations? Okay, so I guess uh, I, I've got one. Just to clarify, we, uh, as a delegation, appoint the vice chair, the executive committee will select its own chairman from their members. So we are, we are only filling the members. I'm sorry, say that again. We are filling the vice chair's position right now. The executive committee selects their own uh, leadership. But membership is still an issue. We only have one. No, the, uh, the the vacancy of Representative Howard, uh, his position on the executive committee is um, uh, 
as a term for it. As, as a member of the executive uh, of the uh, delegation, his seat on the executive committee is automatically. So was it so it was the vice chair. chair we went back and built to. So the vice chair who was chosen will become a replacement on the executive committee for Representative Howard. The executive committee, which is now uh, Representative Dean as chair, and whoever is vice chair, uh, those members will select their leadership. So we, we, the delegation, do not determine the uh, representation on the executive committee. Thank you. That's not clear, apparently. <laughs> I just wonder, is that, is that um, I just don't remember seeing that, that the executive committee is made up of the officers of the delegation? Is the the executive committee is made up of the chair, vice chair, and clerk, plus two other members who are assigned by the delegation. Those other two members would be Representative Aldrich and Representative Silver. Well, I guess actually now you've got to replace uh, Representative uh, Although, no, no, no. Oh, good news is right now we're only voting on the vice chair of the delegation. <laughs> so <laughs> we can take up the executive. That's entirely my point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to belabor. So, um, so uh, you nominate first. So, all in favor? I move the nomination. Be, I move the nomination to close. Thank you. I move the nominations be closed. Second. Oh, second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So, Mr. Chair, we probably would do it the same way we did the, when we elected the chair, just go around the room on a roll call vote and shout out who, you, uh, who you're supporting as vice chair. Sounds like a deal. No, 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 no. So, Representative Hall. Representative Hall. Representative Lang. Representative Terry. Uh, Representative Sylvia. Present. Representative Huff. Clerk of Staines. Uh, Representative uh, Olvera. Clay. Uh, Representative Horse. Representative Clay. Representative Huff. And Representative Lang. What's the vote right now? Yeah, Representative four four. Four four. Yeah, great. I'll vote for myself, Representative Lang. Five to four. Is that all, all that we need to vote on? Uh, yes, I believe we're done because again, uh, the executive council takes care of itself with the chair, vice chair, and secretary being on it. Um, we have two remaining members, uh, Representative Aldridge and Representative Silver, um, who are uh, at large members of the, of the executive body. So, a motion. Uh, was that part of the, the oh. was that part of the proposed agenda? Think, There's one more piece. We have public comment before agenda. In the original motion, was public comment included or just yes? yes it was, it was it's there. It's so, there. And we and we told the citizens that they would have a chance well, to generic comment. That was subsequent. So okay, thank you. Well, this was in the original motion before we adopted the agenda. Otherwise, it requires a two-thirds vote. 
Hello again. My name is Lava Pan. I live in Guilford, and uh, I said I told I attended the Gunstock Area Commission meeting last night, where at the end of the meeting it came to light that the uh, Commissioner Doug Lambert is being sued by Fire Commissioner Strange, or maybe he's not the Fire Commission. I'm not sure what his status is. And the commission voted to approve uh, legal representation for the Gunstock Commissioners, which I believe is oversight. Would you approve providing legal services for the Gunstock Commissioners in their legal fight against the lawsuit from Dr. Strange, who I believe is being backed by Representative Silver, uh, Silver and Sylvia. I'm just wondering where the delegation stands on that issue. And then pertaining also to that issue, there's still two uh, commissioners that haven't been appointed yet. What is your position moving forward in interviewing new commissioners and in, you know, in stating these commissioners into the Gunstock Commission? If I may, Mr. Chair. So as a general rule of thumb, a person who's sued in their position of authority, which I think represent uh, Commissioner Lambert was, is the, the lawsuit, would, the, the legal fees would be, it would, would go to the organization that he's, he's representing. So I have no problem with Gunstock Air Commission representing um, Commissioner Lambert because he's being sued in his role as a commissioner. Um, so that seems extremely reasonable. Otherwise, you'd never have anybody want to do any public service if they have to incur those privately. Uh, in, in respect to your second question about the two existing commissioners, um, that'll be up now to the new chair um, to decide whether or not we want to go forward between now and November. Um, November will be a new election. And generally, the, in, in, at least in our history, we usually appoint in December those, those positions. Um, so, uh, but it'll be up to the chair to so we do have vacancies that are outside the norm, um, whether or not he wants to go forward with advertising and interviewing. Um, so I, I myself am okay either way. I think maybe it is appropriate for the new delegation to appoint those positions and they get hired in the effort. Um, so I would support either direction. So, but we do have a quorum, which was the most important piece. We have a working body right, as it exists right now. So you're moving forward on the uh, understanding that Commissioner Conroy has been legally appointed and that uh, we, we just ratified that decision. Resigned. We just ratified that decision today to reaffirm that that was the action and made and, um, and corrected it for the county attorney who said that was the right way to go about it. Very good. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Oh, actually, yeah, we made it to the entire agenda. We finished the public comments, yes.